The only reason you are doing the job is because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesday. Please box stop from Beware, I will dead to dead. Oh, will you stop? Danny Lost Tumble Report, Moo Moo, Fuck Fuck Chicken, whatever the buy. Danny Lost. Five, four, now. Everybody take a drink. This show is so stupid. John Michael Spurs. Beep boop. Man. For over 100 episodes, the very best fan made wrestling podcast in the world today. Doing the job. Doing the job. Doing the job. Doing the job podcast. Doing the job. Doing the job. This is doing the job. Job. Well, Royal Rumble was a bust and Raw was canceled, so, uh, for, for Denny Logs and Sean Spurge, this is M2J saying, see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Nah, I'm just playing. But, um, <laughs> I'm just joshing. Yeah. But, uh, seriously, folks. Holy, <coughs> holy crap. I'm, I'm alive. I made it. I made it home. I'm alive. I can feel it all around me, thickening the air I breathe. What was that one again? Uh, so, fly something. I always forget their name. So flyleaf? Flyleaf, thank you. Remember Flyleaf? Ugh. Remember Flyleaf? Suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, uh, I'm so sick. Yeah. I'm yeah. Remember when, like, every, like, quasi rocker girl was just all about Flyleaf? No, I don't. That's the thing. Like, I missed the whole Flyleaf thing. Like, I found out about it, like, about a half <laughs> a decade. missed de- the whole band. I found out about, like, a decade after that they were a thing. Anyway. Oh. I'm having internet issues. I <laughs> perfect timing. Sean, are you here? Uh oh. No, I'm I'm here. Oh, you, what are you what are you doing? I'm, what are you doing right now? You're doing a show. What? No fanfare. Well, I, I, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the fanfare I, to come I, in. Well, I, I, pa- usually... I, I panic because in the middle of Denny saying I'm having internet issues, like I think he literally said I'm having internet ish, and then he cut out. Oh, oh. man. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. No, why. I, I usually leave my audio on silent while you guys talk, so that way like, whatever pages I'm turning don't interrupt the show or anything. So well, you kind of caught me off guard for a second. I had to take it off. Okay. Well, about about seeing your translation transfer. Are you stealing my gimmick? I was, I'm just. I'm, we got it. We got stuff to get to today. All right. <laughs> Let's get it down to business. So yeah. Uh, uh, so we were all in three different places when the Royal Rumble went down. Uh, I guess it's an important night. There's a lot to talk about. Sean, you were – where were you, Sean? I was at uh, – well, every year I go to a Royal Rumble party with some of my closest friends, and we all watch the, the Rumble together. So. All right, so you did that, which is uh, always eventful every year. Matt, yeah. uh, you were at the show. Well, I was going to explain that myself, but yes. Can we do that again? Like, I was leading you into it, no, so now you can talk. You know what? I want you to say where you were first. Okay. I was at MAGFest down in National Harbor, Maryland, and – during the Rumble, me and the good sir Andrew Lenning, big oh, and Meester Draco, fans of the show, we uh, had the had the had the had the <laughs> had the had the oh boy, this is gonna be a hell of a show. Yeah, I guess we'll never know what he had. Oh, well, I guess. Well, where were you, Matt? I was at the Royal Rumble. <laughs> I totally wanted to bust that out like a week ago, and I forgot. Nice. Anyway. Hey, remember Denny? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's the first eliminated out of our little podcast. Oh, right? yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Everybody's... Okay. So, how was your life experience at the Rumble? Is that what you wanted to get into? I knew early in the... Like, I suspected that Roman Reigns was going to not get a warm reception. Of course. But... Before the event actually started, they they did the thing they were showing. Oh. The, shut up! They were showing um, 
you know, like video of something, like they were showing some kind of, like, you know, him promoting a toy or just him in a video package. The crowd immediately started booing the moment he came on screen. Wow. And I went, oh, boy. That's <laughs> bad news. Well, and, uh, yeah, that was that was foreshadowing what was to happen later that night. Of course. I mean, well, I'm sure we'll get uh, very heavily into this topic tonight, but mm-hmm. uh, I feel like he was treated a little unfairly. But that's just me. We'll get into I, it later. Well, listen, none of this is his fault. Nope. The, not at all. I, I have an analogy for this one. Go for it. And I wish Denny had internet service right now so he could chime in on this because I'm sure he'll like this one. I'm here. Oh, I'm man. here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm it. Go on. Yeah. What's your analogy? My analogy is you're – I'm, I'm going to try to PG this as much as possible. Okay. You're, you're with a lady, right? All right. I yeah. always love when your analogy starts. Hello. Out. I'm here. I was there. Hello. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Anyway, thank you. So this is like you have a girl, right? She's home with you. And she starts to go – you know, she kneels before you. Mm-hmm. She, she exposes some part of your anatomy. And you like it's gonna happen. Like it's gonna happen. You just need to pace it yourself and not get overzealous. She's she's ready to go. But then you grab the back of her head and thrust completely into her person, and she gags. It's, it's, hey, she goes, "Hey, what what are you doing? Stop!" And you're like, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna keep as you were. Sorry. But then you do it again, and, and she's like, and she gags, and she stops, and she's like, "All right, that's it. I don't like you anymore. You're a bad person." That's pretty much what happened in that analogy. The, the the WWE is the person with the exposed appendage. The appendage is Roman Reigns. And the girl is the WWE Universe. And if you just sat back and relaxed and let everything happen, it would have just happened. You would have had a good memory. You would have gone to sleep. But you had to force it down everybody's throat. That is fantastic. Thank you. Lovely. So, Denny, do you feel like you were, um, unfortunately penetrated by, by Roman Reigns? <clears throat> uh, well, I'd, I'd tell you all about how I feel. I just want to finish what I was saying before I got jobbed off the show. And I was at MAGFest, and, uh, in the very, in the first night, I ran into Matthew from Machamania, because I recognized him. I had seen what he looked like prior, and kind of a long conversation, me and Lenning hung out with him most of the night. And ran back into him on Sunday, and basically he was planning a big WrestleMania, uh, not WrestleMania, big Royal Rumble party. He got way overblown. There was going to be way too many people, and he said, I'm telling everyone to shut down. I'm blowing up his spot. I'm telling everyone to shut down, but the select few, you know, like you guys are cool, and, uh, you know, a couple of the people are just going to be there. So we met at the right room at the right time, and it was less than 10 of us. We just sat in the room and enjoyed ourselves, drank, and had a blast. There's actually a couple of videos that Draco took which I'm going to put up on the Doing the Job Wrestling podcast group on Facebook. So if you're not a part of that, you can search that out on Facebook and join, please. It's going great. So, yeah, I mean, had a great time. Uh, my, just before we get deep into it, my initial thoughts of the entire show, the show itself was absolute garbage. We have uh, TLC and Royal Rumble, two of the worst pay-per-views I've ever seen by the WWE, uh, back-to-back. Uh, the world title match in Royal Rumble, Absolutely amazing. Uh, just totally exploded my expectations. Uh, one of the one of the better WWE title matches uh, ever. So, so uh, do you want the Rumble itself? The Rumble match itself was reprehensible trash. I, I can't say I can't come up with a better phrase than that. Okay, I don't think the rest of the pay per view was that bad. It okay, was, let's was, talk about it. It was a solid card. Did what it had to nope. do. Nope, it wasn't. No. <laughs> no. It wasn't. It was not a solid card. It was, what, what else was solid? It, what they, was so solid? There was no, you know, there were matches. They functioned on the card as matches. All right. Okay. So Usos in the in the Miz the Miz Dows was a d- good match actually, but you know, it. All right. Been there. It was done a good match. Times, the problem. Good. The problem was the crowd is is we're starting to lose the interest in this storyline because we've been waiting for in uh, this what the interest in, in the storyline. In, interest in this what. In the storyline. 
This is a story? Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but they've been teasing. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a story. They've been teasing Damian Sandow and The Miz breaking, like, up for. Like, that's that's the story. It's, it's yeah. not even the story of them facing the Usos. I, that's what I'm talking about. Right, but I mean, like... All right, but, well, let know, me let me complete a... my sentences before you start cutting me off and correcting me. Just a word of advice. But... This is going to be an awesome show. I can tell already. Oh, my God. It's very tense, man. But that was... And the... <laughs> You're just sitting there <laughs> laughing. Everybody take your first drink of the night. <laughs> Lying and laughing. So... Unbelievable. So it was a solid match, but the story that we're waiting to unfold is not unfolding fast enough, and it's going to start losing the crowd, and that takes away from the match. But otherwise... Objectively, I don't think it's fast enough. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think that's the I case. I think that if, if if they already split, people would complain that it was rushed. I doubt. No, I, I, like I, I don't no think winning. so. I don't think so at all. Okay. And, you know, the rest of the card was it was an all right card. The, here's, the, here's the thing. Uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes, so let's talk about Ms. Dow and Ms. for a second then. Okay. If, like, all right, so obviously we're all waiting for the turn and their feud or whatever. You know what I mean? I think um, what is so, like, good about the Mizdow and what's so over is that he's the lackey doing the funny stuff and everybody likes it. I feel like once he turns and they feud and then he goes on from there, I don't think people are going to care because he's not doing the funny thing anymore unless they have something planned for him to do that's going to put him over. Well, they might, but he can't be the lackey doing the funny thing for the rest of his career. I'm like, this no, has to go somewhere. but when did he start doing it? Um, months ago. All right, months. You know what I mean? Like that's you know. I think you, I think you both have too a point long. because yeah, because once once he's done with that, what does he possibly do? Right. Well, we'll, we'll take it on faith that he's a talented performer that can probably excel in his profession. Mm. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll take it on that, I suppose. But I just mean it's kind of like it's it's so overdoing that, and people it's it's the age old kind of like oh man, they got to turn, they got to change already, they got to turn, they got to change, they got they got to move forward. But then like when it happens, you know, let time go by, people be like. I wish he was still doing the Mizdell thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just feel like that's going to be the case with this. I don't think so. But you okay. also you have WrestleMania. That sounds in, like a buy or sell to me, actually, Sean. You, considering that we're already at odds. You're already yeah, and we have WrestleMania in the horizon, so now is the time to start working toward that. Yeah, well, that's definitely an undercard match for WrestleMania. I mean, you got to mark my words on that one. I mean, obviously, I've been wrong about a couple of things given this rumble that just happened, but you know, right? Um, yeah, I think we're all in agreement that that match is going to take place at WrestleMania. Right. Yeah. So, but all right. So then you said the card was solid, but like that was a okay opener for something we've seen a bunch of times already. But it was still a good match. Quick stat that I, that I quick stat that I read online. Quick stat that I read online. The 2015 Royal Rumble featured the 21st match featuring combo of the Usos, the Miz, and Miz Dust in September. There you wow. go. That's a lot of times. And it wasn't even the opener. The opener was uh, the Stinkeroony um, Ascension versus the New Age Outlaws. And even that wasn't that wasn't a bad match. And considering the it, Ascension isn't that good, that was, that was impressive. The Ascension is that good. The other guys are old. I mean, it was cool being drunk and popping for uh, Billy Gunn pulling out Tilt the World slams, but uh, I don't know. It just, it's just—it's kind of like you have a roster full of people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the New Age Outlaws are opening the match in 2015. Not to mention the uh, the, the, the pre-show match was excellent. Yes, the pre-show match was gr that should have been on the pay-per-view. That should have been on the pay-per-view. That was really good. And then you reuse some of those guys in the Rumble, like, you know, we saw them in a match, but, like, Kofi and Big E, well, we'll get to the Rumble. It's just that then the Divas match was awful, and I just feel like, I don't know. I think it was that bad. The Divas match wasn't awful. It was a Divas match. It was awful. Like, it was Good no day. better or worse than any other Divas match. That's, okay. <laughs> awful. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, you, you, like, you know, like, like every Divas match we've been seeing on the, the main roster, there, awful. There's a bar that is set by the Divas divisions, and and to say that every every Divas match defaults to awful, like you can't hold it against them. Then the bar is set. That's at like awful. saying that's like saying man is born into sin, and it's our fault that our souls yeah, are sullied, and we have to I accept know. some martyr in order to ascend to the next level. Could you imagine if there was actually a group of people on this planet that believe that way? <laughs> that, would, that would never happen. That would sell. Never <laughs> such, <laughs> such ridiculous. <laughs> what do we say every week? No religion, politics. <laughs> <laughs> no religion, no politics. Um. Yep. All right. Whatever. All right. I mean, this is obvious. Obviously, was supposed to be a two match show. Only one delivered. So let's talk about the good. Let's let's not be completely negative about this. Matt, you were there live for the triple threat match for the title. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, man. 
This was live experience. This was, and I want to make sure no one minces these words here. This is not the greatest WWE title match in the history of the WWE. It was the greatest WWE title match that I have ever been a party to live in the audience. Period. Okay. 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 Stop. Now I want to grill you a little bit. Compare this match to all of the other WWE title matches that you've seen live. I'm sure you can uh, whip those up okay. right now. Um, okay. Now, are we doing Raw okay. and WWE? Because when... let's let uh, WWE title. Okay. So, or 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 I'll even allow if the world title main evented that pay per view, i.e. Okay. WrestleMania 20. Okay. Um, it was better than WrestleMania 20. Um, it was it was better than. It was better than I was gonna say Goldust and Bret Hart on Raw in Black 1997, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I should include little. Oh oh oh! Huh? Oh, you're doing, doing you're doing Goldust, yeah. Tourette's going. Yeah, he, had, he didn't have Tourette's yet. Um, pre Tourette's. Pre pre Tourette Goldust. Um, pre pre S and M Goldust too. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, that was 98. Uh, it was better than Orton and Triple H at 25. <laughs> it was better than Punk and Jericho at 28. It was it was it was last year's WrestleMania. It was shockingly better than Cena and The Rock at 29. <laughs> um, <laughs> shockingly. Yes, I was joking. Uh, it, it 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 was better than the main of the the Triple Threat from 30, and that that was a good match. Not taking away from that one, it was it was just a better match overall. Um, it was better than Punk winning the title from Del Rio at, at Survivor Series 2011. Yeah, we were there. For that yeah. Time. Um, I'm. It was better than you, um, Orton and, and Cena and Hell in a Cell in 2009. You were also at with me and Sean, the uh, only ever doing the job full cast uh, event. Yes, yeah, so Extreme Rules. Kane and Big year. Show. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, it was better than Kane and Big Show, or not Kane and Big not Show. Kane and Big Show. I'm sorry. I just think of them as one wrestler now. Uh, it was better than. Yeah, it was better than Kane Big Show versus Daniel Bryan. Later. Yeah. Um. I, you know, I, I, there's there's probably been a handful of house show championship did you matches. Go to, did you go to One Night Stand 06? I did not. Oh, that was me. Yeah, I went. That's the only wrestling event. Actually, no, not true. Uh, Royal, no, WrestleMania 20 and One Night Stand 06 are the two events, the only ones I ever went by myself. Okay. I saw. I mean, you, you were also at WrestleMania 20, but not sitting with me. Right. I, uh, I saw Hogan and Taker at a house show in Madison Square Garden in 2002. It was better than that title match. I'm pretty sure it was better than that. Um, Bruh. Yeah, no, I I, I I could easily stand by that statement. It was the it was the best world championship WWE title match I've ever seen live. It was a very pretty, very good match. I'm pretty sure that if I had attended, I would be inclined to agree as well uh, for my track record of right. matches that I've been to. And um, Brock Lesnar was booked as the babyface of that match, was he not? Um, abso absolutely. He was abso absolutely like no like he absolutely. was a babyface. He, Un unquestionably, Cena was just the Cena. Right, it's like Cena was category the Cena. Now. Yeah, Cena was the Cena. Uh, I mean, look at all right. So when they announced the when they announced them, uh, there was the typical Cena boos, and then there was Rollins that got kind of a lukewarm boo, just a, like yeah, you're the bad guy, we're gonna boo. You know, Cena got the you know f you Cena boos, and it's Philly, right? Brock Lesnar got. Gloriously cheered, right? Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, we should say, right. in Philadelphia, obviously. But the, uh, but yeah. the way that he was booked for the match, well, he was the babyface. Think he had the so, baby. right, he, and he's the he got the stretcher spot. You know, oh my God, how's he going to overcome this? And he makes the comeback, like he like he, he got the comeback win. Even uh, it, it's funny because we were watching this match and uh, we're just going crazy watching this match. I mean, it just was you know fire bombs from the start to finish. Uh, I don't think there was a dull moment in this match. That's what made it so amazing. It was like the super coming out party. If he wasn't already the man, Seth Rollins, just unbelievable. He has arrived. No, there, there, there was there was one dull moment in the first five minutes of the match where um Brock Lesnar suplexed somebody, and then um it took him an extra two or three seconds to walk to the other guy. And you know, I started I started to say, well, this, and then it stopped being dull. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But there was that moment though when we saw the stretcher come out, and even Matthew from Botchmania was like, "Oh bloody hell!" And I was just like, "Yeah." I was like, "This seems over the top." And then Cena did the double fu, and we we're like, "Oh." And that, and we both were like, "Ah, it's getting a little over booky." But it, we felt like that for a, a moment, and then it went right back to, "Oh, this is amazing." No, but you the, know the, I mean? the thing the thing about that is though, Brock Lesnar is a video game boss. Like he has. <laughs> 
he ha- he has a, a more energy like more of an energy bar than everybody else. So like normal moves that you would do to him, like you know punches, kicks, headlocks, and take out downs, whatever they they take away way less energy from him than they do a normal wrestler. So like finishers will take away what well, like a normal move would take away from anyone else. Hence the kicking out at one for the right. Game. So you ha- you have to hit him with like ten finishers, and then like maybe you'll get a two count. What did he one count? What did he one count show? The FU. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. I, fr- I friggin' I lost it. I was, and it was like barely even a one count too. He almost kicked out at zero. Can we just? Can we? I want to watch this match with the two of you like together and okay. film it or something. Like, Maybe this, this this match was really special. The only thing that I wish would have happened. And I know this is ridiculous. I was really hoping that he would have got up from the stretcher and actually German suplexed the stretcher. That would have been fantastic. <laughs> I was actually like waiting for it. I was counting on it. He he gave up. It, it could have oh, been like I mean, it could have been like when Ken Shamrock went crazy in '97. Like he just suplexes everything near him, but it just so happens to be out and out of objects as well. Yep. I don't know what they should have had Ken Shamrock suplex like a small fan at one point. I don't know. Um, he German suplex Seth Rollins right on the his shoulder, like high on his shoulder. Yes, and that was. That was a little scary. I, I it was cring- like kind of like I, a stutter step. I cringed because I was thinking, oh, God, like, Seth Rollins, like, wh- one of the newer guys first ride with Brock Lesnar, and, like, he's injured 12, 12 seconds into the match. Uh, well, I was like, how horrible would this be? But now, you know, he went out like a pro. So even the stuff that normally I'm like, I usually roll my eyes at the uh, the the video game OMG moment where, you know, you, you spear someone through the barricade. But it just kind of came out of nowhere, and, like, Cena, like, did it to Lesnar's back. Like really, really heelish, like like with his back turned and, and put him through the barricade. Uh and that was pretty good. It caught me by surprise. And how about Seth Rollins' elbow drop? Like you know, I know Shane O'Mac probably will go down as the best for the outside, you know, from the ring to the outside elbow drop. But the way he kinda like did it like like you know, like stage divey with the elbow yeah. and the slow mo of it, it was just it was so beautiful, man. And and the and the table broke. The table didn't no sell like it does for Randy Orton. <laughs> <laughs> the table hates Randy Orton. Ah, so many moments. Oh, the double suplex on J and J security. Ah, uh, just yeah, Phoenix the false. The f- oh, how can I forget? Even though it was quasi botched because he only kind of put his head on him, but just I was losing it because Matt, as you know, Tyler Black, Phoenix Splash, his finishing one of his finishing moves. You know, I've been waiting for the day we see a Phoenix Splash or a God's Last Gift, and he finally busts it out, and it just felt amazing. Uh, did, did you guys like the on Raw? We'll talk about the special Raw, but like they had mostly interviews because of the snowstorm. I did, and, and, I, and I liked that he, he was like, "It's called the Phoenix Splash." Like, <laughs> like, he corrected Cole. Straight up. Cole was Jeez. like, "I don't." Cole's like, "I can't actually call wrestling moves." What was that? And he was like, "It's a Phoenix Splash, you idiot." Cole was like, uh, Cole, "Cole was like, you know, when you delivered the, I he was like, I guess you could say a corkscrew moonsault." He's like, "Blah blah blah." Well, you know, it's a Phoenix Splash, and like kind of like did like the little like sidebar, like stupid. Uh, I thought I was laughing my ass off. I actually posted on the Facebook group about that. I can't wait to get to Raw. Oh yeah, yeah, good stuff. Um, so did that see, match. Did you just, see? Did uh, you see the the kayfabe news article though? <laughs> like, good God, I oh, raved about the great. Rumble cancels Raw. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> you know what's funny? Comedians. We're driving back. Me and me and Lenning are driving back from Magfest. In the in the the blizzard is like starting or whatever. And I get the. I'm looking through the sheets and Raw postponed to Thursday. And I turn to him. I'm like, oh man. He's like, what? I'm like, it's postponed. I'm like, you know why? I bet it's a knee-jerk reaction because usually after a pay-per-view, the Raw's in, like, the area of the city they were in, usually, or or nearby. Granted, it was back in Connecticut, but I figured it was still going to be in the Philly area. So it's like, wow, what if they want to avoid, like, the nuclear, like, Philly crowd heat and they postponed it because of, you know, what happened? But obviously that's not the case. It was the It was the, it was the Blizzard and the Tribal Band. Yeah. But I just, you know, started – uh you know, IWC mindset going wild. IWC. So, yeah, great title match. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and then just, all right. And, and, Sean. And for those who didn't see it, Brock Lesnar retained. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No cash in. Brock Lesnar was made to be a freaking god in this match. They threw everything at him. He was even, like you said, stretcher gimmick and came back to win still. It was just unbelievable. Yeah. They should do the spot with Brock Lesnar if when he at finally leaves WWE whenever that time comes, uh, similar to the Undertaker in Royal Rumble '94 when like the whole heel locker room comes out and beats him up and they have to take his urn away and like open it up and the smoke came out of it. Like it's just, that's what it, that's what it takes to put down Brock Lesnar. 
Everybody in the locker room has to beat him up. <clears throat> hmm. That's it, still, uh, you know what? I still go back to that match. Which one? No, watching that title match is just kind of like, if he's really done after Mania, I'm going to really miss Brock Lesnar. I'm hoping he's not, and I'm hoping that he might win at WrestleMania, and I'm hoping that's part of his master plan. Well, then let's talk about the results of the Royal Rumble in the match itself, then, because oh, I could, is... I could, I could, uh, I can give you this. I, I, I can tell you what happened to Royal Rumble. Um, uh, go ahead. Everybody was very, very, very enthusiastic about the Royal Rumble. Daniel Bryan came out. Everybody jumped to their feet. Daniel Bryan got eliminated. Everybody sank back into their chairs and stopped caring about the Royal Rumble. And then Roman Reigns came out, and everybody booed the rest of the night. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. <clears throat> All right. I know this is a this is a major topic for Sean. I mean, I think for the first time, me and Sean will get into it a little bit last night about this. Yeah, you um, getting really ornery with me online. Really? I. Because here's the thing. All right. Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble to no one's surprise. It Can was... we actually? I, I apologize. Can we actually break down Daniel Bryan first before we get the Roman Reigns? Because we're going to spend ahead. a lot of time on Reigns. Break Go it ahead. down. So there was. Here's the thing with Daniel Bryan is that. I think it was so deflating, not just that Daniel Bryan didn't win, but how he went out. He was in there for 10 minutes, which was like, basically felt like two seconds for Daniel Bryan. He thought he was going to be there till the end. And he basically just went over the top rope and got bumped into and was eliminated, and that was it. It was so shocking of how quick that all, like, transpired. Yes. And it was, yeah, so that, I think that's what was so deflating. That took the wind out of everybody's sails. Now, I understand it because I feel like, they probably didn't want Daniel Bryan in there towards the end, and then he gets knocked out, and then Roman Reigns wins because as bad That's as the heat, it. as bad as the heat was on Roman Reigns, it probably would have been five times worse. I I think so too. I agree. I agree. So they want to lower expectation. I, I'm right. hoping that I really am hoping this is part of some master plan, but you know we've I've I made, doubt it. I've made the mistake of giving the WWE <clears throat> the benefit of the doubt in the past. Um, if you have scoped any uh, dirt sheet rumors. <clears throat> Apparently, the WWE, while they expected some pushback, were shocked at how bad it was, which mm. boggles my mind that that could even be true. Which is crazy. Yeah. And, and, and But despite the backlash, they're going along with plan A because they feel like they already did the Daniel Bryan thing last year and they don't want to do that again. Right. Um, I, I think I have, like, the, the, the answer, and I, a lot of people are very emotional about this. And, and it's a lot of people are cut and dry, black and white. I mean, like, I usually, I, you know, checked out all my different sources and things, you know, sheets, IWC stuff, and I'm, I'm seeing the feedback. I'm seeing what people are saying. It's, a lot of it is, like, black and white. Don't like Roman Reigns. Don't want him winning. Want a deep bry. And, and I think it's a little bit uh, a deeper than that, why the Rumble match itself was so bad. And it, it, it kind of goes off of what Sean was saying about how Dee Bry was eliminated. It, it, that was the theme of the match, in my opinion, and why it was so bad. It wasn't that the guy – it wasn't just that the guy we wanted to win didn't win, which is another thing we could talk about. Right. But the main thing about why this match was so bad, <clears throat> it's a twofold thing of all the – there was a lot of people in there that people just didn't care about, a lot of wasted spots yes. of just a lot of garbage people that – and and bad timing, like for instance, you start off the Royal Rumble with the Miz and our Truth. No, yeah, that was bad. that's how you start off the Royal Rumble. Two guys, it's it just bad, bad booking, bad idea. Uh, Bray Wyatt gets on the mic after dominating and having the ring to himself and basically feeding a big moment for someone to come and stand toe to toe with him. And all, even though I love him and I'm glad he's back, but Zack Ryder was not the guy he tried out at that point. Again, bad Did they mess that up. Bad booking. I don't know. I, I think they messed up the timing. Mess I, don't, I don't know what happened there, but that came off terribly, and he came in and got thrown out like garbage. So, and then it was twofold with just the the not caring about, you know, the bad timing and not caring about a lot of the guys, and the other thing of all the guys that people did care about, the Daniel Bryan, the the even Dolph, Bray Wyatt, Dolph Ziggler, Dolph, Dolph Ziggler, Ziggler, and the Dean Ambrose, they were eliminated. And unceremoniously dumped out like hot garbage. Which, by the and... way, which, by the way, they did this whole storyline for a few weeks now where uh, Ziggler, Rowan, and Ryback all got fired. Oh, my God, they're not there anymore. Cena's got to win their jobs back. For what? They just pop in and pop back in. Like, what? like you don't do that. That's that's a horrible booking. That it's is just, extra- the, whole, the whole thing was trash. Extraordinary short-sighted. Garbage. Yeah. 
and 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 on top of it, the the way most of those guys got thrown out was just the two friggin' guys, the two guys that not just myself that's been voicing, but everybody out there has been just enough with the cane in the big show. Enough with the, the more we talk about show, this, the more no it seems it seems obvious that the WWE's just trolling everybody. It's it's got to be. It it's has gotta to be. be. It's got to be one giant cosmic joke, and that's the cosmic key. Oh oh oh! You guys love. Dean Ambrose. You guys love Dolph Ziggler. Well, here's the two big guys that we love, that you hate. They're going to beat the crap out of them, and not just, you know, oh, they're fighting and they, they get torn out. No, they're going to pick up their lifeless, limp body and toss them over the top rope like a sack of garbage. And it's 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 insulting. It's insulting. It, there was no excitement. There was no drama. There was no tension. They throw at everybody that everyone likes like garbage. And then there's Roman Reigns to get out the two big lugs in a in a in a BS finish. And the guy that no one wanted to win, especially a Philly crowd, and it was nuclear heat. Not even though Rock was able to save that. Did you see that? Did you see the post show fallout too? And the Rock was obviously like he couldn't was having a lot of trouble cutting a like a coherent promo. Yeah. Mm. I've never seen The Rock rattled for a promo. And this is a guy that got booed out of the building at WrestleMania uh, 17 or 18 when uh, when he was wrestling Hogan and went on with the show like a pro. Mm-hmm. But this one this one somehow shook him. Um, now, on TV, or the network, how did it come off when Daniel Bryan was eliminated? Because uh... let me tell you, the energy, the, the way that the energy was sucked out of the arena was akin to the Undertaker streak ending. I, I, I wish the camera, I wish Draco's camera was on my face uh, when, when Dave Bryan got eliminated. It was kind of like, I'm sitting there, we're joking, you know, having a great time, and uh, I just kind of like, uh, it just, I, I was the guy. I was um, streak. It was shocked on the guy. Yeah. See, I remember. So I, I, I was, I, was pretty was much like face. that too. My beer, my beer. I literally turned. I, I think I said something to Matthew, and I looked back, and I just put my beer down, and I saw D. Bryan on the ground, and went. I didn't even see the elimination. I, I blinked, and he was gone, and I just. So I, 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 I forgot. Just, I forgot the exact order of events, but he ended up. You know, he went over the rope, and then he knocked someone away from him, and then he was standing on the apron, and it looked like he was waiting for something to happen. He was going to jump back in the ring, like he was waiting for someone to come near him, and he was going to like springboard in. And yeah. I remember thinking, K- I was like, well, kayfabe wise, why wouldn't you get right back into the ring? Why would you wait and risk being? Li-? And then he got knocked, like someone like bumped into him and knocked him Ray off. Wyatt, yeah. And he knocked, he knocked away Ruth Evans and Wyatt. And then like off. there was this moment of disbelief, like, wait, what? Like it was it was exactly the Undertaker getting getting was, pinned to Vaney, where you just you know the three count happened and you were like, wait, what? Wait, you it just was start- almost yeah. so perplexing where you actually had to think to yourself, <laughs> was that really supposed to happen? Uh, and even Daniel I mean, Bryan's yeah, reaction too. Say. Like he's so of, of course it was supposed to happen. I'm just saying like that that was the initial reaction because it was so it was so shocking that he was in there for so short and he so unceremoniously got knocked out of the rumble too. Like at that point, and even his the way his reaction was where he got, just kind of sat there and he was kind of like, "Wow, that just happened." Okay, well I, I have two well I have two pie in the sky bookings of of mania that I. Th- would hope are, are either both possible or both going to happen. Um, uh, other, other than the potential, you know, the easy way out, which is just Brock Lesnar wins and keeps Bruce <laughs> being champion. Um, either th- this main event of WrestleMania is going to turn into a four-way inc- and include The Undertaker and Daniel Bryan. I'll stop you right and if, there. Well, if you, <laughs> well, need, if my, if, if you need my logic on that, I'll explain it. But oh, I would love to hear this because well, I think you're dreaming. Well, they, and they have made a point to say this now. Uh, Daniel Bryan has been saying, I, I don't, you know, I never lost the title. So what's up with that? So you did say that on Raw. Right. So, so, but I would, but to, to have him get just put into the title picture the same way that he was last year, I feel like would be repetitive. And if, and if Undertaker's really coming back and Brock Lesnar's still on the active roster now, you don't want to have to think, like, there has to be some kind of a score to settle or something. And instead of having just the same scenario again, it's uh, Daniel Bryan in a triple threat with, with you know, two other guys for the strap. Like, that might be a good place to interject The Undertaker, especially if he's not super, you know, ready to go as he's been, you know, he's been deteriorating over the last couple of years. His responsibility in the match is then lifted a little bit. 
And that's that's a marquee main event for a WrestleMania, isn't it? Is it not? I I, I love your logic, and it is. It is in my opinion, it's sound. That's it, my it, that's, that's my that's my sky in the su- that's that's my pie in the sky booking. The, what? The, the more reasonable one, which I think, it's one of those things. If this happens, everyone will go. Oh, now it makes sense. Which is, R- Reigns wins the title at Mania, and then Rollins cashes in, and everyone goes, "Oh crap!" If if yeah. if if D. Bry had won the Royal Rumble, that'd be D. Bry. I don't know if you can end a WrestleMania that quite like that, but just why saying, not? just huh? It's why not? It's different. I know. Well, here's, yeah. here's what's interesting about that. If they do that, because now by that point, Reigns with a WrestleMania crowd is going to get booed anyway. Right, now, that's the other worry, thing, yeah. You worry about WrestleMania going off the air with people booing and, and being pissed off. But if Rollins cashes in on Reigns... And cheer. Guy's going to be exactly, white hot. Don't they just cheer Rollins? Right, exactly. And people exactly. go home at least somewhat happy? And then people will say, oh, wow, okay. They had they had us the whole time here. Like, Daniel Bryan winning would have been really... If, if he were in that spot, then Rollins would have nuclear heat. Everybody would go home angry. I mean, <clears throat> this the the latter is more likely, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's how I can kind of like just really dispel the both. Of, I I love the both of them. They you both made perfect sense, you know. But the thing is, if they obviously they had to know the way they booked this Rumble, they made it the Roman Reigns show, and they made sure D. Bry was out early, so maybe they, the fans will get the heat out of the way. It didn't work, you know, because you, like you were there, they were deflated for the rest of the match, right? Right. It, it, um, like the moment he went out, like everybody sunk into their chairs, and when the next countdown happened, everybody was like, three, two, one. Yeah. Like the glimmers of hope was 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 Ziggler and, and and Ambrose. You know, people popped, and then they were they were in and out. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, if they you know knew Roman Reigns was getting booed prior to the Rumble, D. Bry came back and set the crowd on fire yet again. All the obvious stuff every single week where I kept saying it's obvious, it's obvious, they have to capitalize on this because, you know, he's the, he's the most over guy. And I think, were, they were, you cut, were, you, were you cut off of Skype when I, when I said that, like, the moment, like, the first time they showed him on the Titan Tron, all, like, all night, not even as part of the show, but, like, as a commercial for the network or something, like, they popped his face on the, on the, on the screen for, like, five seconds and the crowd n- nuclear heat immediately? What, for Reigns? Yeah, before they even went on the air. Like, he popped on the screen, boo! Like... Like yeah, I just, I think, we knew right away that this is going to be like a bad night for Roman Reigns. Yeah, I feel bad. I mean, like that's like you know, I feel bad that it's like it's come to that point, but it's just because people they they know they they knew what was going on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if if all that what I just said, and they still didn't give a flying f, you know that like oh man, we got to do something so this place doesn't go crazy. If they stuck to their guns that bad to have Roman Reigns go over the way they did to the point where they knew. That there was going to be heat because they had the freaking rock there to come out and try to, like, subdue the heat. Like, they were ready for it. They knew. If they stuck to their guns that bad for this rumble, there's no way they're going to go off course now for Mania. Roman Reigns is going to WrestleMania, and he's going to beat Brock Lesnar, and he is the new John Cena. He's the new John Cena in every way, to the way they're just, hooking him, I don't get the it, way though. they write his friggin' promos. But wait, wait, wait. But I don't, I don't understand, though. I mean, like, that, I mean, I don't disagree with you. They're doing that. But what I don't understand is John Cena came along at a time where there, it was, a new guy needed to be there. The, the Rock and Steve Austin were gone. We didn't, ha- we didn't have a marquee guy anymore. We had, you know, we had some big names, but we didn't have, like, the guy, right? Right. Now we're at a time where, you know, John Cena's been there a while. He's he's a 50-50, you know, fan favorite, but everybody hates him. Daniel Bryan comes out, and he's the guy. The crowd has chosen him. The, he he is the most easily the most over guy on the roster, and and most over in years. Yeah, years. and why is there this rejection to him? I like, tell I, you. I, I, I go ahead. I, I'll tell you simply. I'll tell you simply. Because D. Bry, because Brian Danielson. <sighs> Is looks like Brian Danielson, and he doesn't look like Roman Reigns. But are we past that That's now? It. I thought we were. Oh, we are obviously not. Because if they figured, if WrestleMania 30 was was truly supposed to be the crowning of the guy, of the guy, he would have run. He would have won the Royal Rumble last year, and he would have went on and, and been in the main event anyway. There wouldn't have been a scramble. And then when he got hurt and lost the title, he would have came back and put right back to being the guy. But the fact that he's not just shows you that they picked the new face, the new guy. Because you know what it is? You know what it is? D. 
Daniel, and we say this all the time. It happened with Ryder. It happens with everyone. They don't want the guy that gets over because because he got over. They want to tell you who the guy is. But, they want you. They, they don't care anymore. I, but I don't get that. Like, I don't that's get how you either, make. That's what's you're, going on. you're a business. That's how you make money. When the fans are like, we want to buy everything this guy is selling. Why do you turn around and say, no, we want to sell you this guy instead? Like that makes no business sense. I don't get it. Like I just I can't wrap my head around that. That's stupid. They and they don't think they can market Brian Day. And you know and you know that he's he market he's marketed himself already. I know, uh, but it, I'm telling you Vince, it's Vince. It's it's Vince and, at and, the top of the pyramid, bro. And here's the here's the and here's the other thing. Roman all of all of Roman Reigns' momentum completely stopped when he got injured at, toward the end of 2014. Well, and, momentum he had. Right. I mean, he was gaining momentum. Like, momentum. A little bit, he, a little bit, a little bit. He did. Bit. And you know what? Depending, the next, we were saying back then, we don't think he's ready to be in the spot that he's going to main event WrestleMania when, when when it was already starting to bubble. And we said these next few months are going to be crucial. And then he got injured and he wasn't around for the next few months. So you can't have a guy who's been on the shelf that wasn't nearly where he should be by then go away for two months come back, have a few matches that end in DQs and countouts with the big show, and now he's main eventing WrestleMania? What? The guy's been on the roster like a, a hair over two years. It wouldn't be as bad, in my opinion, if they let Roman Reigns kind of be just cool, right. you know, the cool badass, but they said, and, and, and it goes back to something I heard a while ago, something I heard from JCY's friend Will, who actually now works for the WWE, and he says straight up, it's all about spots. There's your this kind of guy, there's your that kind of guy, there's your this kind of guy. And when John Cena, it's starting to get around that time to where he can't be the face anymore, they just want another John Cena, and that's what Roman Reigns is going to be. And so they, they but, give him John Cena-like promos. But, but... The problem with the problem with that, and maybe the WWE doesn't realize this, Cena was over when he became the guy. The crowd was solidly behind him. It took yeah. some time for him to be on top and the crowd to start rejecting him. This guy is already being spat back to them before he's even at that level. And you have everybody like when you see your audience sit back into their chairs and go screw this when Daniel Bryan gets eliminated, don't you turn around and say. Jesus Christ, what are we doing? Like, that would be the equivalent of, of Steve Austin getting eliminated in the 98 Royal Rumble. I make that reference every single time I talk about this. This, this is just like, because Steve Austin, he was just, Steve Austin was the ringmaster. You know, he was, and he was, you know, anyone that's interviewed and they talk about Steve Austin back in the day, he was hired to be just the solid hand, the mechanic, whatever. There was no master plan of, you know, the, the machine behind him. He said, Vince, can I just do my thing? I got this idea for the Stone Cold for, for this kind of thing. And he goes, go ahead, kid. Here's the ball. You know, it was basically, you know, do it or fall on your face, and then you're kind of buried again. And Stone Cold was allowed to do it, and everybody got behind him, and they said, this is something we need to capitalize on. So in an age where everything is scripted and micromanaged to the point where let Roman – Say and and act like Roman Reigns, and if that doesn't work, then he stays in it where he is. If if Roman Reigns went out there and cut the promos he wants to cut, and and is the character he wants to do, and everybody gets behind it, I, I'm not gonna sit here and cry like, oh, Roman Reigns is the change. no, because people would then want him. I have nothing against the guy being the man that the people are behind. I just the fact think matter is people are behind Brian. I just think one more year and they didn't push him down our throats, he he would totally be in a much better spot. I agree. Um the other the other thing about Roman Reigns is uh, the last night on Raw and I was I was I was watching this morning on YouTube. So I, I maybe it didn't come off on TV quite the same. The audio when Roman Reigns is being interviewed keeps going completely to mute and then comes back on when he talks. The audio was bad. I mean, I watched it. No, before. no, no. I watched it on YouTube. You know what? I, you know what? I, and you know what I read? What? Apparently, they were cutting the audio because supposedly Vince or one of Vince's lackeys was reading him his lines to say in response to the questions. Okay. Like, literally, now, Sean. literally cutting the audio, saying you know, blah blah blah, you know, my my family, blah blah blah, and then 
audio comes back on. My family, it's about family, blah, blah, blah. This was a thing I wanted to say to Sean on the show. When he, when they were making posts last night about saying that, it, you know, his interviews, uh, you know, they interviewed him about the Rumble, and then he talked to Brock Lesnar. It sounded so genuine and sounded unscripted, even though I think you admitted that it was scripted. But I just want to say that this whole Roman Reigns thing, this whole everything, you know, from here on to Mania, if you don't think that everything he's saying is micromanaged to the T, and now this proves it, you're out of your mind. Of course. Absolutely. Micromanaged to the word, and it just which, and, and I don't buy it. It doesn't feel right. That's why I'm not excited about this. Which totally sucks for Roman Reigns, and it sucks for Roman Reigns. I don't want to slag on him, but it's just a, it's just bad. It's not good. It sucks in general. <laughs> it, it sucks in general because what they did the other night at the Rumble pretty much it screwed Reigns and it screwed themselves. Because now you painted Reigns into a corner where nobody's going to like him because of what they did. They forced him down our throats. I mean, I like him, but, you know, nobody else really does. And now they screw themselves because of all the backlash they're getting. So this was a lose-lose situation that they put themselves in. You think they're doing a slow turn and going to make him heal? They have to. They have no well, choice. Here's the thing. They won't. I mean, here's, they won't. They, oh, here's the they thing. They won't. Here's the thing. They're, they're addressing they, – they, and this is one of those things that sometimes can get muddy. They, they try to address shoot – things happening with the fans and the company as kayfabe things. So, like, they said to him, like, what, how do you feel about this backlash? How do you, you know, how do you, some people think you've been handpicked for this? Like, that's a shoot question, and you have to handle it in a kayfabe way because you're on the, the television product. And he I, turns, I didn't like that. And he turns around and says, you know, even if that's the case, you know, I, I have to take advantage of the opportunity. And But if they're acknowledging that on the air, first of all, that's weird because the authority is – these heels that have been after him for months, and he's on the, the wrong side of that. So to say the higher-ups have handpicked you and just be like, I mean, if they have, then, you know, I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity. That's a weird thing to, to play. But it's like the, you know, and I feel like it, it, even even to the, the post-interview where, like, what Batista said last year when he said if these fans want to boo me, they could boo me. If they want to cheer me, they could cheer me. And then, you know, like two weeks later, he was like, screw you fans. I'm a heel. Mer. Like, that's exactly what they – he's he's saying, you know, those people pay their good hard-earned money. If they want to boo me, they can boo whoever they want. Like, like it's – Corporate, it, ridiculous. And it's it's, it's kind of like, you know, when a politician gets caught in a scandal and they got to give, like, the uh, the typical, like, corporate apology right. nonsense. It. It, just, it just sounds so ridiculous. I'm going to take some time off to uh, fix my family and blah, blah, blah. I just uh, and the thing I don't get is he's a, he's a young guy, right? He's like in his like mid to late twenties. Like there's yeah. there's so much time to, to to prime this guy. Like you don't like what is the rush? Like let him chill out, learn his craft, learn how to say a few words other than believe that, and and then have him come up to the main event picture here. The funny thing is, out of all this, I'm thinking now too is that if they do end up turning him heel in the next like couple months or whatever, they've all of a sudden got a main event heel and a really strong one. Yes. So that's the ironic thing out of all of this is that they pu- they're pushing him to be this like huge like top level babyface, and they might end up getting they still might end up getting a top level guy. He might just be a heel instead. I just I can't. I, I don't think they're gonna do that, man. I, I really think that they gave us what we wanted last year, and this year they're like, nope, nope, nope. We're sticking to our guns. But they, and but, thought, see how but we all out. thought they were gonna do that last year too, and they changed course. No, I said last year they they had to because no, wait, I'm saying we no, we all said that they had to. Right. I'm just saying that they were they looked like they were going to be super stubborn and they changed course. Now they're doing the same thing again. They might just change course again. I just, so I'm reserving well, I'm touch th- on that. The fact the fact that they knew full well going into the rumble what the what the score was and that they did stick to their guns means that oh. they don't care this year. They uh, do not care. They are going to do what they plan to do, period. Perhaps. I, perhaps. I, I mean, I think it's absolutely That's ridiculous. just my opinion. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that after last year what they pulled, that they went and did the same exact thing again. And the only eraser for that is the same result, is to put Daniel Bryan in the main event again. I just I just don't I, – I, again, I, unless – it's like the only sensible answer to this whole puzzle is that they're just screwing with us and everything's going to be okay by the time we get to Mania. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just my, I feel my, too beaten down. My my bigger issue, I have an issue with the WWE and how they booked this whole thing. My my bigger issue is these stupid idiot fans. And this is what I was harkening on last night in our little Jesus. Facebook group. 
because all these people bitch and moan about Roman Reigns, and honestly, he's not that bad. I don't want to hear it. No, so, he's, he's not. But, but the fact, okay, I get it. Like they're for, they, you feel like they're forcing somebody on you, but the only reason why you feel that way is because you don't want him. You want somebody else. But if they gave you the exact same, same thing, it would be just as predictable. It's just that but, now but, but you're hang right. On, hang on, hang on. They feel like somebody's being forced on them, but the only reason for that is because someone's being forced on them. No, but if but if it was Daniel Bryan, they could have done the same exact thing. I love Daniel Bryan. I like him more than Roman Reigns. But they could have done the same thing with Daniel Bryan, and nobody would have cared because that's what they want. Right. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but yeah, people want to people want to oh, write the Sean. show for WWE. Right, but Sean, but you, and, you're you're fan to where the difference is. You know, whereas if they did the same thing with Daniel Bryan now, he already spent the time. You know, to get to where he was with the fans. Well, hang on, Roman been... Reigns wasn't there, so it's. That they were doing this. Wait, wait, Denny, 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 Denny. Daniel Bryan was hurt for John, a year. John, John, John. There's, there's a glaring omission to this, to this counter argument here, which is simply, yes, the fans, the fans are mad because they're not getting something they want, but they're the customers of the product, so that that's sort of okay in a context like this. It's, it's okay, but people are, are being, are, are, are if, acting like this. If I walk, because if I walked into a store, and I was like, I want to buy a Milky Way this afternoon, and the guy was like, no, you want Twix, and I'm like, I'm going to buy a Milky Way, and they're like, no, no, you want Twix, and you say, haven't, I'm buying a Milky Way, and they say, well, we're not going to sell you Milky Way, we'll sell you a Twix. Haven't we had this conversation on the show, though, that you can't let the fans write the show? You can't, but... but that's, that's exactly what it would be doing. You can't necessarily, but when the, when the water is going down a certain, like, the current is going in a certain direction, you can't start swimming upstream and being like, no, everybody come this way. Like the crowd, and you know something, and and I, I I thought about this for a while today, and it's this is one of those things. It's probably impossible to really um, separate feelings and, and and do a control experiment on this. I don't even think the fans are upset that Daniel Bryan is not in the title picture as of right now. I think the fans, if they really think about this introspectively, are upset that we're not going to get a one-on-one D. Bry daniel Bryan match, or uh, D. Bry brock Lesnar match. I would love a D. Bry uh, daniel Bryan match. Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. No, no, but I think that if the title, whatever was happening with the title, could have been Roman Reigns and John Cena even, or even Seth Rollins if he I won last night. I, I, really, I really think that these, these, pure, these purest fans, these smarks, everybody, the match that people wanted to see, the match that I wanted to see, the match that we've been clamoring for for over a year is... More than that. Yeah, is a dream... Since, since, since 28, is since it, the night when right, Lesnar came back. Exactly. Is this dream bout between Lesnar and Brian, and it didn't have to be for the title. It could have just been the two of them tearing down the house I, at Mania, and the title just happened to get thrown into it because they're both title contenders. In fact, they've both been champions in the last year, and... Had that have happened, and Daniel Bryan winning the Rumble and Lesnar being the champion was the path of least resistance to get there. Now that that's off the table, Lesnar's still the champion, Daniel Bryan's not the Royal Rumble winner, that leaves that match completely, you know, we're, we're separated from that match pretty far at this point. And I think that's really what people are, if, if they, if you think about it, that's really what people are probably upset about. I don't think that's true at all. I totally do I think people have uh, – no, no, no. Listen, listen. You guys talked for about a half an hour straight. I was sitting here quiet waiting for you guys to finish. I don't think that's true at all. I think, yeah, of course people want to see Brock Lesnar and Daniel Bryan. But people want Daniel Bryan to win at all costs no matter what, and they definitely don't want Roman Reigns to win. So if John Cena was champion, they'd still want Daniel Bryan to win this Royal Rumble. They wouldn't have been happy about Reigns winning and saying, oh, okay, well, our consolation is that we get Daniel Bryan and Brock Lesnar. I, there's no way that crowd would have reacted that I way. Don't, I don't know, that. man. I, I don't know. There's no way the crowd would have reacted that way. In if that All right, were put it case. put it this way, they still let's, would have been. Let's say him. let's say Brock Lesnar lost last night, right? Like, and let's say Seth Rollins came away with the win. The crowd's going nuts, you know, because he's. Well, a fir- I, don't, I know what you're saying. Right. People want to see Daniel Bryan as champion. They no, want no, to see no, him no, win the Royal Rumble and main event WrestleMania. No, 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 no. 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 If, feel, if you feel this out for a second, so Seth Rollins wins the title at like last night or two nights ago. Mm-hmm. Daniel Bryan's in the Royal Rumble. Lesnar, you know, just like Goldberg, runs in, F fives him, throws him over the rope. Oh my God! Lesnar just attacked Daniel Bryan. That's different, right? That's a different scenario. It is. That, I'm talking about it. I'm talking about a different now, scenario. Now we're fantasy booking, though. Now we're fantasy booking. Right. That's not what the case. But is. I'm saying it isn't. It isn't just as simple as he didn't win the Royal Rumble and now Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble. This this puts a whole new dimension on what's happening and. The fans will immediately know we are now building toward a Brian Lesnar match, and 
regardless of whether the title or not is involved, that's a match that everybody would love to see. The title would would be second fiddle up to the same way that Taker and Punk was the main event of WrestleMania 29. It just wasn't on last. I mean, Matt, can, yeah. I, can, can well, I clarify Matt's point without the fantasy booking to maybe clear it up a little bit, Sean? Please. Before you, like, because you've been, like, hard disagreeing it. Let, let me get to the heart of the matter of Matt's point. I wanted to, like, piggyback on that in a way because I wanted to get to this point in the show is that minus all the fantasy booking, the, the, the fact of the matter is you, Daniel Bryan's the most over guy in the company, period. Like, that's it. We've established this. We talk about this every week. He's the most over guy in the company, and the fan base, they're upset that – He's not the the Austin right now, the guy, the guy, the guy, because he is clearly the most over guy in the company. No one connects with the crowd like Daniel Bryan. And granted, because he's the most over guy in the company, the natural feeling is you want him to win, 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 be the champion, blah, blah, this and that. Yes, Sean, you are right that people want to see that for sure. But I think, like how Matt's saying, if people really just thought about it, or especially a guy like me, he's my favorite wrestler ever in the world. He's beaten Shawn Michaels. Brian Daniels is my favorite wrestler, period, all right? The thing is, it would be just fine as long as a guy who's that over is still going to the biggest show of the year and is in an important featured match, or he's an important featured guy on the show. Because the thing is, when you have the most over guy and you go to WrestleMania and you put him in the mid card with Sheamus, which is what's friggin' penciled in, for the millionth time, they're going to finally just know the match we wanted last year, you're just going to get the damn Sheamus match. He's going to go out there in the middle of the show, people are going to go crazy, and then when he's gone, people are going to care less about everything else because he's the most over guy. As long as he's near the top of the card, whether it's the title match, whether it's against Lesnar, as long as he's up there, it, it's, it's, it's a difference. You know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Like Matt said, it doesn't have to be the title match. We don't have to fantasy book the crap out of it. But when you have the guy who is clearly the most over guy in the company, and you as the, as the company don't treat him that way – that's what makes people angry. Do you know what I mean? Yes, they want him to be in a title match, but if they gave him something as good that people can really get invested in, they would be okay with now. Here's Roman Reigns just you know being the champion over there. I don't. I don't. Think, I don't think that. I think. I think part of what you're saying <laughs> people is true. People would still be upset. I think part of what you're saying is true, but a. I think nobody in a crowd of fifteen thousand people who aren't quite as smart as as that. The whole crowd isn't going to stop and just say, okay, well that's that's fine. No, they're still going to boo no, the crap out of Roman Reigns. I names. agree. I agree. But, like, at least in the end, we can still, you know, in the have end. Daniel Bryan in, 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 a, in, a, in a, you know, in, in a future match. But the fact is, now that we're looking at a guy that people aren't really behind is going to main event the show in a match that no one really wants to see. No one wants to see Roman Reigns. But, right. Yeah, I think my, that's, my bigger, that's the real issue. Listen, listen my, my bigger issue in all of this was how, for the past, you know, however many several months, Everybody was all upset and all up in arms about how predictable ro this whole Roman Reigns thing was, and how they were forcing that on throws. It's so predictable that this is going to happen. I don't and think. I don't like think. I, said, I never heard that argument. I just heard people. Uh, that, me either. I don't know about the word predictable. That that was my thing against you last night. I don't know predictable. It was just everybody. We was just, well, what we were hearing. Like what we were hearing was that the hot rumor was that this was going to happen, and people didn't want it to happen. Not that it was predictable. Of course, they, but but people have been they've been saying it to them for months that this is going to happen. Nobody wanted to see it happen because they've been saying it. And that's I think a big part of it. It's not the issue here. It was for, uh, for months. It was definitely not. Here's the guy that we want. Here's the guy that we think they're going to give us. And it was I hope the guy we want wins. But one of those two. It was always one of those two guys. I mean, it really was. We we said uh, other guys. Well, for, I think we're going down a bad path where now all of a sudden the, the, the fans. It's WWE can't write a show, and you can't allow the fans to write your show for you. So now what happens? It's, I, I think it's more than writing it for you, bro. Of course it is. It, 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 what, were, were they were, when Austin? Because now every, every now every time. Austin. No, listen, and now because now every time that, that the fans don't get exactly what they want, now you have a riot. No, because here, here's the thing. Like, and, th and now think back to Royal Rumble '99. Vince McMahon throw or you know whoever threw it on Stone Cold. Was it was it Vince McMahon that actually threw him out, or was it someone else interfered? Either way, it helped. Whatever. Yeah, Vince McMahon wins the Royal Rumble. He gets nuclear heat, but it's not. It's not this rejection of what's happening. It's it's heat for the character in the story because Austin, their guy, didn't win. And, you know, this will probably evolve into something else. But 
you know, Austin is still the guy. But we were comparing an era where there was there was better writing and people and the fans respected the writing. Okay, well, that, there's an that, art... now, nobody respects it anymore. So now all the fans just try to try to pretty much write the show. Well, the the, the writing's not respectable, so that's why. No, it's absolutely not. It's hor right. it's horrible. But I, I just think if you have. I mean, fighting. I think we're at a, we're at a point now. Just like fighting the Undertaker for years was really more of, of the creme de la creme than having a title match at Mania. Like Lesnar is in that echelon now. Like you have a match against Lesnar. Oh my God, you are you have arrived. You're making bank. And Daniel Bryan, he had just about one of the best Mania main events in the history of Mania main events. Like there's no way he can even. To I don't think there's any way you could even top that in his career, the, the, that whole story and how that happened. So him having a big match with somebody like Lesnar, be it for the title or not at Mania, the fans would be more than okay with that. Yeah, you, you'd probably still have a few people that you can't make happy no matter what complaining about it, but that would it would just work, and it would be fine. And, and that's, I think there's a visceral reaction to that not happening because people thought we were going to get a lesnar Bryan match, and now it looks like, at least for the time being, we're not. Well, I, I, th I think it's just clear cut between the guy that people want and the guy. It's just an, a guy, just another guy. Roman Reigns has Roman Reigns was cool in the Shield, and when they split up, he was still kind of cool. But they've morphed him into just another guy, just I think, another. I, know, I, I think I, I think a lot of that is in the, on WWE and their writers, and a lot of that's on the fans too, because I don't think they ever gave, gave him a fair shake. Because I think the first, the, the, the second they started to see that, oh my God, this this guy's the next Cena, everybody instantly turned. On Roman yeah, because they don't like that. Right. Which sucks yeah, because they, they never gave him a chance. They don't want to see another Cena because they're what? sick of regular Cena. Yeah. They don't want but, the light. But that sucks, though, because Roman Reigns is not John Cena. Cena. John, yes, Roman Reigns is. is not John he is Cena. Now. He is now. He is now. He's not John Cena. There's nobody who's like John now. Cena. He is now. You're Except he actually he's worse because everyone's booing him. Not even the kids are cheering him. Like, like we, we missed the actual, like... You know, fantastic night of ecstasy, and now we're just and that's, already in and that's and that's BS too. Because on, whenever he comes out on Raw, he gets a big pop. I don't know about a big pop. That, that, he that, gets that, a big pop like that, every week on Raw. That's that's a lie. That's not a lie at all. Go back and watch it like every Raw. He, he's gotten a big pop like almost every week. I am certainly not going to watch every Raw. Not a big pop. Go, go, people, come out. People pop. Yeah, people cheer. People cheer. I wouldn't say big pop. Not so even. You, but you just told me two seconds ago that everybody's booing him, even the kids. All right, exaggeration. But okay, well, the, and the other exaggeration is it's not John Cena. Oh, uh, they've they've clearly made him John Cena. It is John Cena time. It we is John we Cena don't really Cuomo. know. We don't I know. Super. He said, "I am Superman." He said the word. All right. Well, Superman John Cena part. in your face. He's not even subtle, John Cena. He's Super Cena. Well, I don't know what. I mean, if if it's well, fair to say he's the next Cena, like it looks like that's what's happening. We won't know. We won't might know be the next person. In we that won't role. know until we get there. All we know is whatever they have done going into right now, they have. Completely screwed him over, and he's this, he's a good worker. He's got he, he looks fantastic. Girls want to rip his clothes off and lick his un, under things. Um, unmentioned. Yeah. Um, they just they apparently got overzealous and and just kind of didn't stay the course. They they got very impatient and they overlooked the guy who everybody is into right now, and this guy was not ready. This guy was not right for the picking, so to speak. I think. If this is the case, then this company is in big trouble going forward. Absolutely, big trouble. because now, because now you're at a point where anybody you try to present as a star, people are going to crap all over because they didn't make them. I don't think so. I, I I just think if you do it in lieu of the people that are already massively over that the crowd wants to see. Look, Ziggler's been there since two, has been on the main roster since 2008. And the crowd has been absolutely enamored with him for about the last four and a half years. Um, and he's been in the same spot, spinning the same wheels over and over again. And this this, this kid g gets put onto the main roster a hair over two years ago, and he's already going to the main event of Mania. And, of course, the crowd's going to reject that. Um, it's just, it it I just think... seems like it's going to be a bad cycle because all the fans loved him. And then WWE said, okay, fine, we're going to do something with him. And then they said, oh, you're going to do something with him? Now we don't like him. No, 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 no. I'm glad you said that because I think you're missing the point here. Right. That, that, that's not what it is. That's not what it is at all. Because if they did, that, think... with, if they did that with Ziggler, the crowd would be okay with it. They did it with uh, Ambrose, the crowd would be okay with it. Yeah, I, I don't think it's that. I think it's because 
Everyone liked Roman Reigns. Everyone liked him in the Shield. He was super over. When they split up the Shield and they said, well, we're going to make him the guy now, they changed Roman Reigns and people don't like him now. He wasn't Roman Reigns. Now he's like John Cena like. You know what I mean? I'm using air quotes here. I I really don't think that's necessarily What's true he until, until, he... until until listen, until like three weeks ago. He didn't start cutting those type of promos until like three weeks ago. He never cut a promo like that until then. A little in, bit. In more. fact in fact, out of the three guys, he's by far the most uh, the most out of the three who's still like he was in the shield. He kept the gear, he kept the music, he kept the entrance. He kept everything he does. Well, the, the, other two became, the, the other two became their own character, and he became a thing that people don't like. So, so but, but you're sitting here telling me that, 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 that he changed. He didn't change. He's, he, was, he's the, he was the same guy that everybody did like in The Shield. Look. It's the second that everybody, the is, er, the second that everybody felt for like a split second that WWE was going to try to try to make him a guy, they said, oh, no, we can't have that. God forbid. <laughs> The problem is that they, they did it backwards with Roman Reigns. You say you don't want the people to write the show for you. I agree with that. The people shouldn't write the show for you, but the people still – like, if you don't have the backing of the people, it's going to fail. So if they wanted Roman Reigns to be the guy, there's a way to make him the guy, to build him over time, to get the support of the people. So when you skyrocketed him – uh, in the state that he is, where he needs more seasoning in the ring, he needs a lot more seasoning on the mic, and he needs to be involved in some storylines and angles that, that he can actually get the attention of the people and get the people behind him. And once they get him to that point, then skyrocket him, then you have your Roman Reigns. They didn't perfect, do that. In a perfect, perfect world. world. That's how you build a star. In a perfect world. They did that with Daniel Bryan already. He went through his long road. He got the people behind him, and he's over. And they said, "Nah, right. we we're, want we're this starting. Guy. We're starting to go. Over, we're, we're starting to go around in circles now. So we're going around in circles. But I'm saying he's over for a different reason. You don't want the people to write the story. But the thing is, if you wanted him over, you would have got him over with the fans. You would have took your time to get him over with the fans. I, I still say this: the thing that screwed him the most was CM Punk in that interview. No, I don't think it, so. It, it, I think yeah. it's nothing to do. That it has Nothing. everything to do with it because that's – the second he said that WWE was trying to make him look strong like 40,000 times in that one promo, that took off and it caught like wildfire in the internet. And everybody – To the idiots, yeah. To, yeah, to, and, to the and, idiots, yeah. It and, changed and the most, idiots. Yeah. yeah, and most of the people are idiots. It, yes. Okay, fine. You, you're right. And that's I, the problem. But that's the audience that they've garnered, so that's what they have to do. Yeah, well, then that, that's, that's the, product, the product we watch where most of the fans are idiots. You ever gone to a wrestling so, show? Of course. They're all idiots. They're all idiots. Can they're you not – at least agree with me, Sean, that it, it's it's not a matter of the people writing the show. It's just, you know, if they wanted Roman Reigns, they should have spent their time to, to cultivate Roman Reigns and get him, you know, in the favor of the fans. They could have. No, they, they could have. I'm not, say, I'm not saying that Reigns definitely deserves a spot. I'm just saying that he's unfairly – he's being treated unfairly by the fans. That's been my <laughs> argument this whole time. Reigns isn't my favorite guy. I mean, I like Debray a lot more, like Rollins more, like Ambrose more so on and so forth. It's not like I'm sitting here defending Reigns because I've got this giant heart on for him. It's just the fact that I feel like fans are so insufferable with the way, the way they react towards guys now. No, I agree. I, it, I agree. That's I my, mean, a lot that of, it's my big issue. It's a lot of the fans, fans. But I mean, the fans... Fans ruin the product. I think the fans are, are indirectly addressing the booking, and fortunately the only way to do that effectively is you have to boo Roman Reigns when he's out there to tell the writers that this isn't acceptable to them. I think it's, too uh, many people are jumping on the bandwagon, like what Sean's saying about, like, it's fashionable to boo him, but it comes from somewhere. It, it, it came from an actual legitimate gripe about, like, this is not really, we're not really feeling this. But then, of course, then there's all the idiots that jump on and be like, well, oh, make him look strong? Well, screw that guy. You know what I mean? So, yes, I agree. All but right. it comes we've, from we've, somewhere. We've been at this for an hour, though, so we all right, get so into let's, let's, buy or let's, sell our emails. Just, yeah, there's so many results. The buy or sell, I'm really, yeah. What are we doing first? Let's we'll do buy, buy or sell. Buyer. Okay. It's time for another game of The Price is Wrong! Ooh. I went to classic. Yes, classic. All right, good. Vintage. Vintage. That was heavy, guys, but you know what? I respect everyone's opinion. Your opinion sucks. What do you mean my opinion sucks? 
I'm just Sean, you know I don't, I don't dislike the man. I'm just it, trying to lighten They're just mood. doing it all wrong, and you know, you know they are. So, what ha- oh. Denny, what happens when we agree on something? Does like Sean have to take a drink? <laughs> Uh, Sean, no, Sean has to drink an entire bottle to the face. <laughs> Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. If we agree on something, Sean has to smoke crack. How about that? <laughs> Great. <laughs> so you have to have crack on standby every show. Just yeah, least. I mean, you live in Staten Island, so it should people, be hard to smoke. People come over. You smoke crack? No, no, I do a podcast about wrestling, and when, and when the other two co-hosts agree on something, I have to smoke crack. Well, that doesn't it's sound good. Like, well, they don't ever agree, so don't worry about it. Yeah. It's kind of like, I don't smoke cigarettes, only when I drink. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? So stupid. All right, let's get to some results. Um, so I proposed a uh, couple of these way back on December 8th. Uh, buy or sell, Dean Ambrose. Oh, wait, whoops, I'm on I'm on the wrong thing. Sorry. Uh, over under, Damien Sandow is still Mrs. Stunt Double. Over under was the Royal Rumble. You both went over and were correct on that statement. Yay. Although there's Yay, obviously yes. cracks. Oh, uh, speaking of cracks, smoke crack, we agree. Smoke crack. Yeah. Yeah, smoke some crap. I, I have a feeling I'm going to come out of this by yourself very angry, by the way, but we'll see. I we'll see. lost, definitely lost some. December I 15th. Lost... Go ahead. December 15th, buy or sell John Cena. Uh, John Cena defeats Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble for the WWE title. You both sold it and were once again correct. Hey. Well, Good right. job. Buy or sell, same date. Buy or sell. Roman Reigns wins the 2015 Royal Rumble. Matt, you sold it at the time. Denny, you bought it. I hedged my bet. Wait, what was it again? I know. That Reigns wins the Rumble. You sold it, he bought it. Now, Denny ended up hedging later on. Okay. So. Yeah, I, su- I hedged my bet on that one. I know it. Yeah. Uh, December 29th, we didn't have any buyer sells. January 5th, buyer sell. Seth Rollins cashes in his Money in the Bank contract at the Royal Rumble. You both sold it, um, and he didn't. Over under, Ziggler, Ryback, and Rowan are reinstated. Over under date was the 19th, which was the Raw before the Royal Rumble. Uh, you said over, thinking it was going to be at the Rumble, and it was actually a push. It was the 19th that they were reinstated. Okay. Okay. Uh, I once again, two weeks after the original one, asked who wins the Royal Rumble, and you both at that point said Daniel Bryan. And yeah, that was the hedge. As, we, as we've discussed in the past hour, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. Over under, number of eliminations for Roman Reigns at the Rumble. Uh, I did ten and a half, uh, and you both wisely went under. He had six. And Way to go, us. This, this was the... <laughs> I don't know why I wrote this. This is the episode JCY was on. We had four people. And I was putting his predictions in, too. And you both, I have for both of you guys, under, under, and for JCY, I just said Reigns. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Reigns is going to be there. It, it, it meant that instead of lim- eliminating anybody, it actually rained in the arena. It rained. Well, it rained booze. It certainly did. It did. He made it rain up in that bitch. Uh, <laughs> January Another bitch uh, from by Roman Reigns. I like that line. <laughs> by the writers. By the writers, I mean. By the writers. January 12th, buy or sell, and this is where we had a lot of them. Um, oh, no, that was next week. I'm sorry. We only had one. Buy or sell. Bray Wyatt is the final heel remaining in the Royal Rumble. You both sold it and were correct because you both said Rusev was in a bay. And he was. And, and he was. They were correct. Rusev Fulfiga. Rusev Machka. Did, did they botch that? Did the bell ring after he got rid of Kane and Macho? I, and yeah, I thought it heard a ring, ring yeah. And I, I saw the, a referee waving it off, but I was confused on why the bell would ring and the ref would be waving. And then, you know, the crowd started chanting, we want Rusev, or let's go Rusev, or something. And then yeah, now, I, just to go over the quick tangent, I think I told the story last year. Um, so I get together with a bunch of friends every year, and we have a little gambling party. So out of, out of ten of us, we basically throw ten bucks in the hat. Uh, we draw three numbers at random. And whoever comes out during your number is, like, your guy. It's like a lottery ticket. And whoever has the winning number, so this year it was 19 and Reigns, wins the $100. So I had Rusev, and I was like, I don't even I didn't even see him get eliminated. What the hell happened? And I was, like, begging for him to come back in the ring. And the second he did, I'm like, oh, please make this happen. And within two seconds, he was gone. So I, uh, Matthew did the same thing. We actually did that. Uh, I think did he you? had – yeah, yeah. We had – he had Daniel Bryan. Bryan. No, we didn't gamble. We just did it for funsies. We had three numbers each. I had, I know I had the boogeyman and uh, two other complete jokes. So yeah, yeah. I had, I had, I, I had number thirty. I had number thirty. I had Ziggler. Oh, okay. I was happy yeah. about that. I was like, yes. I had Stardust, Ambrose, and, and Rusev. So I was like, great. Two guys who are gonna go far and not do, and not actually win it. So yeah. Whatever. Um. Okay. So January nineteenth. This is where we had a lot of results. Uh, buy or sell. Roman Reigns has the most eliminations at the Rumble. Uh, you guys both sold that, and it was a push because he was tied with Rusev and Bray Wyatt with six. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Who is in the final four of the Rumble? Uh, <laughs> well, it's, 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 Big Show, Kane, Reigns, and Rusev, technically, right? 
technically that was the final four. You, uh, yeah. Matt, you said Ziggler, Brian, Reigns, and Rusev. Uh, Jenny, you said Rusev, Wyatt, Reigns, and Brian. We and both uh, had... you yeah, both I, I... Uh, you both pushed this because then I said the tiebreaker was the final two. Right. And you both had Rusev and Daniel Bryan <laughs> as your final two. That's amazing. No, 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 no. We both we both had Rusev and Reigns, not Daniel Bryan. Oh, as the final two. Oh, yeah. yeah. Final two, yeah. yeah. Final two, exactly. But, I mean, we both correctly said Rusev and Reigns for the final four. You did? Thank yeah. You yeah, the only difference was Bray Wyatt for, for Danny and Ziggler for Matt. So, uh, you guys split that one. Yeah. We'll, we'll throw that one out. Over, under. Number of eliminations for Bray Wyatt. Over, under was five. Uh, Matt, you went under. Danny, you went over. Woo! And you won by one. You had six. Uh, number of eliminations on your bandwagon for uh, Bray having a strong rumble and he did. yes exactly you guys were asking me why extent. I put yeah until he just threw him out like yesterday's trash like you said yeah, that's to an extent he, well I wouldn't say to an extent he by far was in the rumble for the longest amount of time and he was tied for most eliminations so I would say but I was pretty much correct he, on that prediction but then his elimination kind of like made it eh. but I mean yes to, yeah. to an extent I, I would, I would, no, they, I, come on, give me some kind of credit here. They, they teased, I'm, I'm giving you all the credit. They I'm teased my weird fantasy match, too, because he got, he, they, him and Rusev got in each other's face, and the crowd started chanting USA. <laughs> it's true. Um, okay, so we did a number of eliminations at the Royal Rumble. So it was Reigns, Wyatt, Reigns, Wyatt, and Brian combined versus the field, so everybody else. Um, Matt went with the field, Denny went with Reigns, Wyatt, and Brian, and the field won. Reigns, Wyatt, and Brian had 13 combined. Six oh. six and Brian had one. Doesn't that mean? So, by uh, the way, Kane. Uh, Kane does that mean that there's sixteen others? The, Kane became the mostest eliminationist person ever. Wait, they had they had thirteen all together. Thirteen combined. Well, doesn't that mean that there's sixteen others that that, that that's the rest of the them and they won? Right, you win. Oh, I won. Okay, good. Yeah, you won. Yeah, yeah. No, but Kane became Kane. Uh, beat, yes, he's eliminated uh, more more people than anyone else in Royal Rumble history. Yeah, beat HBK is right. Even though most of his eliminations were combined with Big Show, which was really stupid. I know. That should be half an elimination. Yeah. Well, that's part it of still, the It would still count, though. Huh? Reprehensible. Because he was only one down, so even if he had, like, four halves, he'd still, yeah. Exactly. Fire Cell. Those guys. Fire Cell, Daniel Bryan enters at number one or two. You both sold it. He entered at number, I don't know, 11 ten. or something like that. Ten. Number 10. Yeah, yeah. 10. There you go. Over under, Daniel Bryan's time in the Royal Rumble. Over under 45 minutes. You both, thankfully, went under. Yeah. And he went under by a lot. You think there's any chance, by the way, that the reason that he wasn't in there for very long is because he's maybe not fully healed at all, and they want to um, give him some time to recover before Mania, even if that I means think it was twofold, you know, yeah. like protecting him, like physically wise, and then also like get him out quick, and then hopefully the heat will die down. But that no, I think it was, I think it was more the latter, and it was just a little happy accident then that he got a little bit of both. Happy accident? Yeah. What are you, Bob Ross? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> was he Jewish? I don't think so. I gotta, I gotta look it up though. Ross, Ross, is, Ross could go either way. Yeah, it could. Over under NXT superstars in the Royal Rumble. Over under was one and a half. Matt went under, Danny went over, and we didn't get yeah. any. Yeah. Uh, so Matt went that one. Could have had some fresh faces in there, but you know, you, you had to have uh, the boogeyman. Yeah. Thank thank God we had the boogie. Thank God we had Titus O'Neil for four seconds. Idiot. I, I like. I heard they wanted to do it one second, but he couldn't even do that right. Yeah, I, no, I heard. I heard. I mean, I, I like the Boogeyman and Bray Wyatt being in each other's face. That was kind of a good spot. I guess. Interesting. Over under number of eliminations for Rusev. Over under was five and a half. Uh, once again, Matt went under, Denny went over, and Woo. barely got it. Yeah, it was six. Oh, oh. Barely got it. You set the over under, mother effer. Yeah, you barely, barely got it. Hey, you barely yeah, got over. it. You got, you got six. Okay. Yeah. Hey, how? Barely, how is that barely. grammatically incorrect? Barely only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, bro. Okay. Okay, well, now there, there's an example of barely. Okay, do you want me to reverse this decision? Uh, I want to reverse your face. Okay, well, there you have it. Over under, Dolph Ziggler's time in the Royal Rumble, 45 minutes. You both, <laughs> and what's even funnier is you both went over. Well, <laughs> he entered at number 30 and was in there for 2 minutes and 19 seconds. Oh my God. Wow, so, you timed it, bro. Well, I didn't time it. I read it online. That's but, I'm a stat, man. Baby, baby, so basically, F you fans. Wow. Okay, over-under. Two, two more of these. Over-under, number of surprise returns to the Royal Rumble. The over-under was an even three. Uh, Denny, you went under. Matt, you wisely pushed, and we had three. All right. I thought I pushed. No, you did whoa, not push. Whoa, whoa, whoa. For surprise returns? Three? Yeah. Yes. It was four. Uh, no, there was oh. none. No, there was not, oh, and, and and I and I I was worried that we would get into a beef about this. And I thought I pissed for three. What? 
I, I thought I pushed. For three. I pushed for oh. three. All right, so so tell me why it's not four. Okay, okay hold on. I'm reading this now. Bubba Ray Dudley. Yes. Uh, the Boogeyman. And DDP. Yes. And DDP. And Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder's not a return. Zack Ryder's not a return. He's never on TV. Yeah. He returned. He had a return. No. He said, we you know, said. You know what? And I, and I, 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 I this, this is. He doesn't have an injury angle. Yeah. No, we said that it, he, he returned from injury. No, he, he didn't. He was injured he and he on returned. TV, though. Listen, listen. If, if, if Zack Ryder were a, a regular member of the roster that was going to now resume being on TV, I would say it's a return, but that doesn't work like that with Zack Ryder. Because then you'd have to say you'd have to say if he's on raw if he's on raw next week if he's on if he's on the thing uh, Thursday no because you'd have to say Titus O'Neil counts as a return also yeah that's he's not never gone he's been on superstars and stuff he he just hasn't been around at all do you think okay do you think that even half the fans knew that that was a quote unquote return from injury for Zack Ryder I don't think yes, so yes they knew they, they knew he was injured but that's not even a return because he wasn't doing they, it the announcer said it he was returning from injury that's not a return I'm sorry. He returned from an injury. How was that not a return? Listen, because I don't care. I I don't get a point, but Matt shouldn't get a point. It was four. That's not a return. That's not a return. He wasn't doing he anything. He returned from an injury. He was gone, and then he returned. That is the definition of return. He's been gone for like two years, though. <laughs> because he's not on TV. That's, that's a conscious decision. Like the, I think the last time he was on TV was like September 22nd, or whatever that we had that buy or sell about him being on TV again. And, he, and then he got injured, and now he has returned from injury to the roster, to active That's... competition. He has returned to active competition. No, he has And he returned in the Rumble. He's going to be wrestling. Whether it's on Raw, Superstars, he's back. That Who cares what show that, that was He's back. Oh, you that was the equivalent of, of a Los Matadores guy being in the Rumble. This game is so crooked. It's so ridiculous. It's not crooked. It's he not returned crooked. from an injury. You, you're an idiot. Besides, I'm still old one from the COVID Kingston incident of last year. <laughs> No, you don't owe me, bro. Yeah, that, you do not get that one. No, we had we had this we had this argument a year ago, and I I got the the nod of I owe you one in a, in a ca- case no, of no, technicality. No, 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 no. Kofi never got a push. He never got a push. Mm-hmm. I don't care if he rolled up the champion uh, and and beat him. What? That's not a push. That's not a push. This is nothing. He's <laughs> he's, singing and, and, he's <laughs> singing and dancing and kissing babies and and doing black guy dances, mammy. Matt. He's not being a push. You can beep boot me all you want. This is this I'm is gonna trifling. throw you off the show if you keep cursing. All right. A year later, we're still on Kofi Kingston. <laughs> Fire cell. Oh, how about how about Kofi Kingston's time in the Rumble? He uh, he came in uh, just to get like knocked into Adam Rose's rosebuds, and then like that was easily the weakest Kofi Rumble oh, moment thing. Well, there's no more. Easily they've weakest. done everything to do. There's no more ideas anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And they only had Ad- Adam Rose's in the Rumble. Why? Just for that, because he was in it for five seconds. Yep. Last result. Buy or sell. Ziggler has the most eliminations between himself, Ryback, and Rowan. Uh, Matt bought this. Denny, you sold it, and he did. Ziggler had two. Ryback had one, I believe. Wow. No, Ryback had zero. Excuse me. Ryback had zero eliminations, and Rowan wasn't technically in the Rumble because he beat up Curtis Axel, and he didn't technically take a spot. He just went out there. And it wouldn't matter because he didn't eliminate anybody anyway, so... So that's it for results. Do you wait, 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 get... wait, wait. There's a, another one from a while ago that we have to address. Oh, is that the, the subscribers? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Let's go. Um, Jeez, I don't even know where this is. So, so, so they announced that they did hit, in fact, hit a million subscribers. Right. I don't, I don't remember what I said to it, so. I think you went under and I went over. That it was going to be a million and I said no? Yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure Matt went over. I totally went over. I, I don't remember what I did, so I really can't tell. I'm not going to be mad about that one. You guys are scheming on me anyway. So I'm what not is scheming. Ah, you guys, schemes. Schemes, schemes bro. Uh, not Zack Ryder, right. not the turn. This is unbelievable. Let's put it this way. I, I, actually, wrote, I actually wrote in my notes, Zack Ryder doesn't count. And was oh, totally... oh, 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 okay. Oh, no, wait. Matt wrote it in his notes. Okay, you heard it here, For whatever it's worth, For whatever it's worth, I probably pro- watched Raw more closely than either two of you. Every single week, I and I didn't even watch. know he was injured. I just I thought he wasn't he was... on Raw because that's what they do with Zack Ryder. They don't he's, put him on. He's the been show. healed up for months. Like they just don't use him. So the fact that exactly. they, just, they popped a... him into a spot at the Rumble, that's not a return. Oh, he just came back from injury. He has not been healed up. For he's months. been healed up. He was supposed to have a six month out for surgery, and instead he did some kind of therapy where he was going to be out for two months, and that was like in October. He was injured, and he returned at the Rumble. That's a return. I just don't get it. Sorry you feel that way. Here are some fresh new buy or sells for you guys. Excellent. Buy or sell. 
The main event of WrestleMania 31 is Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Bye. Like straight Absolutely. up single match as straight we up bye straight up bye I have a bye. Now if there is a cash in after that match, does that neutralize separate. it? Separate, separate, yeah, separate, separate thing. The so fact that, that when the bell rings, it's those two men. I'm gonna sell. Right. You're gonna sell. I, I can't imagine. I, like, I can't imagine they just go business as usual on this. It's gonna it's gonna be horrible. They have to. I think they're going they to. They don't I mean, have I, to. They don't have to do anything. The main event could be Heath Slater versus Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think I think they should do something different, but I think they're just going to. I really and, think so. Okay, I I understand that most likely it's going to be the last match. But even though I said main events, I'm I'm just saying this right now. I mean, the WWE title match is Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Oh, so you mean you're more focusing on that? It's just a title match, not like, necessarily I, the last match. I, I doubt the fact that this is not going to be the last match anyway. I'm just I'm throwing it out there right now. I'm saying it. Like, do you think that? Do you think that? I, this but is actually – I don't know if you thought of this already, but maybe because since they're going to stick to their guns and that Roman is getting all this heat, that Roman wins the title in the middle of the show or not in the last match and Sting going over Triple H is the main event? Oh, God, no. Is that a possibility? I mean, that would be – that would be stupid. No. But do you think that they do that? No. Anyone else maybe, but not Triple H. Imagine Triple yeah, H. That would be, that would be made very made. PC on his part. Oh, my God. Uh, all right, buy or sell. Brock Lesnar leaves WrestleMania 31 as champion. Wow, man. I got to I, I, I gotta sell that. I feel like I got to sell it also. I just got to sell it, man. Because if, if they go with my idea that Roman Reigns isn't, isn't going to be the only challenger, then I, I feel like, yeah. I'm just curious. I, if I had worded it this way, if I had said buy or sell Brock Lesnar – defeats Roman Reigns and retains the title. So, still sell. I mean, sell. My, se- my my heart is broken. You know, n- normally I, I do buy or sell. It's like I kind of stick to my heart. Like, half what I think is happening, half what I want to happen. I'm just going by think now. I, I just I have no heart, man, just after this rumble. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't. I really don't. I just, you know, I, my heart was broken on, on Sunday night. So, buy or sell. Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus takes place at WrestleMania 31. Sell. I really, I, I, despite the rumors, I really have to sell that. They are really, really stupid if they do that, man. But, ah, oh, man, there, there, there it is, my heart again, man. There's yeah, heart. I, I want, I want to buy it because I feel like they're finally just gonna do whatever the hell they want. I just, even, even that from a booking standpoint is horrible because then you have two guys that have been injured. They just come back and face each other with nothing behind it. They'll make something behind it. They, they, they'll rehash the 18 seconds. Sheamus will be a heel. Daniel Bryan will get his revenge for that and go on from it. I mean, I could see it being a story, but it's kind of like, I don't, just, I don't, just don't know, man. The crowd's going to crap all over that if that happens. Here's my one heart is sell. Here's my one going with my heart is sell that. I have to hope against hope, man. Me too. Buy or sell. Rusev's streak ends at WrestleMania 31. Buy John now, of course, now, Rusev. Now, of course, we didn't. We didn't say yet that uh, they already announced John Cena versus oh, Rusev yeah. for Fastlane. Right. Right? That's Wait, what's called Fastlane? Mm-hmm. Can we – yeah, can we just side note this for a second? So, like, I want to ask you guys, why do you think – and they blatantly said on Raw last night that, oh, the authority had this match planned for WrestleMania. <laughs> I mean, these guys never had an interaction, and you're just going to straight, like, lift the curtain and say, yeah, they had this match planned for WrestleMania 31, but it's happening at the February pay-per-view. So what do you think is the reason behind this? I don't get it. I know, but I don't think his streak's going to end it. Is it was it buy or sell or an over under? Buy or sell. Okay, I'm going to sell that. I think Cena already ended an undefeated streak at for uh, Bray Wyatt at the last Mania, and having to do it again at this Mania would be really stupid. Well, uh, they're doing a lot of stupid things right now, so you so, can really. So, do you think then that, that means he maybe it is a no contest at Fastlane or something like that, or? Either way, Rusev doesn't lose a fast lane. And then at at Mania, the same thing, or Rusev just straight up wins? Oh, uh, man. That's a, I don't know. I really don't know with this one. I don't know why they're doing the match. I think, yeah. Something happened to where they're like, okay, we need to do this match now. Especially, okay, so if Lesnar's leaving, then now, of course. You, would need, you would need another unstoppable monster on, on the roster for a while to look really strong. If Lesnar is sticking around and they go through with this stupid idea for the WrestleMania thing, uh, then you're going to have the crowd 
chanting for Lesnar and booing Roman Reigns. And it, it, if if it somehow ends up that Lesnar's not leaving and he stays the champion, then we're going to have a lesnar Rusev confrontation, which would actually be – I'd be okay with that. I have a – Don't, have a don't forget, too – I was going to say, don't forget, too, for this buyer's as hell, if John Cena breaks his streak at uh, at Fastlane and you sell it, then you still win the buyer's as hell, just the reverse way. Wait, what? Um, because the, right. the buyer's as hell is – his streak ends at WrestleMania 31. You could also spin it that John Cena just straight up beats him at Fastlane, which I doubt, but if you did... That would be really that. strange to just do a throwaway like that. I have, I a, so. I have a silly idea. Silly idea. That's probably not the case. I, I wouldn't necessarily want this, but do you think that um, because of the backlash for Royal Rumble, that their answer is, since they're not going to do the same thing and put Deep Bryan in the main event, and they, it's already kind of going around that they're really just not going to do that again... Um, do you think knee-jerk reaction, why they, they put the match at Fastlane? Because they still wanted to have that match. They're just going to do that there so they can instead do Bry beating Rusev WrestleMania. So it's like, okay, okay, you want Bry? He, he can at least do something else important, and you guys will cheer for that. It's possible, but it's so early to tell. I, I just, 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 just you know what else? You know what else? And if, and if Rusev is still the United States champion by then, you have him win the United States championship? No, yeah, no, absolutely not. Know. Absolutely well, that's, not. That, that's the case for both D. Bry and John Cena. Yeah, that, I forgot about that. Yeah, that would be because now because uh, now if John Cena's feuding with Rusev for at least two pay per views, now you're locking up that title, giving it nothing at all. Right. Because I'd have a hard time believing John Cena is going to win the U.S. title. You know, I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna sell it too because if you have John Cena uh beating the the Rusev streak and Roman Reigns going over Brock Lesnar, it's just gonna be a giant mess of WrestleMania. <laughs> people are gonna go crazy, man. Mm. It's gonna be it's gonna be rough. In a sky full of people, only some want to fly. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's gonna be rough. So yeah, I'll sell that too. Last buy or sell, and this is going um away from main roster WWE down to NXT, because I feel like we gotta start talking about NXT a little more. We do. So they got this show coming up on uh, February eleventh, the next uh, pay per view or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And they're having a number one contenders tournament. Uh-huh. Are you guys both caught up on this? Yep. Oh uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's like by yourself. The, the only two reasons I didn't cancel the network when everybody was canceling the network was because uh, Tuesday Night Titans and NXT. There you go. By yourself, Finn Balor wins the NXT number one contenders tournament. Um, well, he's I injured. Would so. have, now, yeah, I would have bought that, but I think he's injured. Yeah, so no. Bust out. Is that an actual? Did they say he's legitimately injured? Yeah, I mean it's not bad, but he's gonna need time to recover, and it probably won't. Um, probably gonna. Happen. I didn't know. I didn't know that was legit. Yeah, no, he he he's apparently they they've given him some time off to heal. He doesn't need surgery or anything like that. He just does, he's you know did something that needs some some attention. I Before. think it might be um, Kenta. Who? Oh. Kenta. Hideo Itami. <laughs> <laughs> Love doing that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, I just wanted I wanted to say this too because uh, I was definitely talking about this. Uh, Finn Balor, um, everyone's talking. He's the future. He's the man. He's this. He's that. You know, he's got it all. But I'm telling you, uh, if this is the way they're treating D. Bride, because uh, which I really believe is his size and his look, then you could forget your dream. And if, if Finn Balor's going to be the man, it's just not going to happen. Well, if that's the case, you could probably forget almost everybody in NXT that they're all the indie darlings that came in. Probably, probably. So- I don't. Probably. I don't think that's necessarily true. Not necessarily true, but I mean, it's just it gives me a what's going on right now gives you're me a really if, bad hope for the future. But you're talking as if like Daniel Bryan's career is over and they're never going to do anything with him again. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But that's, but, that's but how you're talking. They're, obvi- they're it's obviously. It's season. They might just be cool. They might just not be doing anything for WrestleMania season, and he picks it back up. Well, look, if WrestleMania doesn't go exactly the way we want it to go, we'll just stop covering WWE. We'll do ROH. We'll do NXT. It'll be great. <laughs> I can talk about Tuesday Night Titans. NXT is WWE. Yeah, but not really. It is. Yeah, it's it's like a you know it's like their minor leagues. It's like saying that like AAA is AAA is MLB. It's not MLB. It's AAA. Yeah, I guess so. Thank you. I guess so. Yeah. Anyway, but that's it for by yourself. Yay! Time for email, right? We got a lot of email. We got a lot of email. A lot of email. What's the crack? What's the crack? Matt, what would you like to start with, man? Um, 
we just go chronologically? We got, we got five emails. We got lots. I have t- and I have two. You have emails. Oh, wow! Look at that. That's awesome. All right, so Drago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go, with Jason Drago. All right, <laughs> no, John, you're gonna love this one. <clears throat> Gotta make Roman look strong. Let's put him up against Big Show and Kane as the final three of the Rumble. Gotta make Roman look strong. I digress. Are you guys ready for the huge storyline and plot being driven for Reigns versus Lesnar? The epic promos that each of them are going to deliver on each other on the mic. Yeah, that's going to be, uh, well, Heyman will save everybody from that, so don't worry. Uh, what else we got here? There was a good story that you can't even say is making uh, David Ruffin. Yeah, so Daniel Bryan actually said, and they call, like again, this is shooting into kayfabe. He says... I thought this would be a great story that I come oh, back yeah. from injury, win the Rumble, and go on to face Lesnar at Mania, and that's my big comeback. And, and be, he, um, he said his exact words were, "You have the ultimate David versus Goliath story, and it's you on a silver platter." And he's like, "Well, I mean, that was just like, wow." He, you could sense he was frustrated there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. why? Why, he why, said it right why, there. why? Why was that? Why were those Daniel Bryan's words and not Vince McMahon's? Hmm. Why were those Daniel Bryan's words and not Vince McMahon's? Do you think I don't know? Do you think Vince would make him say that? Why not? Uh, you know what? I, I you know maybe because I I feel like we're giving we're we're, we're uh, not going back to this argument, but we're totally crapping on Roman Reigns because you know he's being fed lines, but we're giving Daniel Bryan and everybody else in the roster the benefit of the doubt that these are all that that's because they kept they, that's because they were cutting the audio out in the middle of Roman Reigns. Uh, in, in I'm not crapping on Roman Reigns. I'm crapping on the writers that they have to do this. But, you know, but like Roman Reigns is just be a pro wrestler. Yeah, but but, giving everybody else the benefit of the doubt. Those could have been Vince McMahon words. Well, I'll tell you why. Because Vince McMahon talks about brass. Brass ring, brass this, brass that. Yeah, I have the brass, brass, um, brass balls. Uh, Daniel Bryan's talking about silver, silver platter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Sound um, logic. Question for the hosts. Other than Roman Reigns being the next John Cena, in quotes, Ooh. physically, not on the mic, and his wrestling heritage, which is amazing. My question is, why would Vince, Triple H, and Stephanie, who knew the crowd wanted and chanted with them in sarcasm every weekend month, sarcasm how? Why would the three of them disappoint the paying fans? I don't understand the question. I think what he's saying is just, um, uh, just the decision that they went with uh, with Roman Reigns, and you know. Hmm. Uh, I believe a lot, like I believe a lot of people in the season in Philly probably wanted their money back when they saw Big Show and Kane. I don't know if I wanted my money back. We wanted to stay there and yell angrily. Um, somebody play devil's advocate. You you are Vince or Triple H, and you knew what happened last year. Why did you do it again? So the, the easiest devil advocate is that is that apparently they had no idea this was going to happen. That's what the reports say. Apparently they 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 were backstage saying what's going on. Why aren't they cheering? And as, uh, I, I can't believe that they'd be that oblivious. <laughs> I, yeah. I, 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 sarcasm, yes, I know. But I, I, it's, to, I think to answer Draco's question is what I said earlier. They, they, it happened last year. They amended it. And this year they said, well, we don't care this time. Simple. That simple. Yeah. Um, they They'll do what they want. Question for the stat man, Sean Michael Spurge. Was last mm-hmm. night's Raw the first time they did a studio interview Raw? As I actually have no memory of one. Uh, as a video editor and interviewer, I thought they did a nice job, except the first interview with Reigns that had the loud buzzing mic noise. Well, Draco, there's a reason there was a loud buzzing mic noise, because they were screwing with the audio to read him his lines. Ding, 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 ding. Hmm. I, I, was, I, I thought they was like, wow, I think WWE, like, they, why would they have this bad audio? I noticed audio? that. I was like watching it, and I was, like, I was like, why does this seem so bad? Like, I, I've never seen, like, their production value was always on point, and then it was just... Kind of messy, and I didn't understand it. And now, yeah. now I know why. Right. Uh, I can't remember any other RAW that was. They've done some. Like, uh, they've done some like you know like holiday clip shows where it's just like they're just somewhere. I don't know if it was in, yeah. in the studio, but. But no actual RAWs like this. Okay, which email are you reading next? Uh, I want to do what's the correct. Okay. I like to do what's the correct. Excellent. Okay, so big, big Shane. Hi, lads, all the way from Ireland, across the pond there. What's the crack? Rumble was decent. Oh, boy. That Raw episode was cool. Maybe the second Raw after Mania would be cool to see this, but probably not. I don't get it. Um, it means the, 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 do something like this again. the second Raw being, that would be as cool or contender for as cool. Uh, as yeah, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, okay. Second to yeah. the Raw after Mania. Got it. All right, so here's time for what's the crack. Here's the questions. Denny, was the triple threat... Threat match, uh, the 
basically he's asking me, was that match at the Royal Rumble the best match of Seth Rollins' career? Um, easily the most important match and the biggest match of Seth Rollins' career. Uh, it's arguable is it, that it's the best match. I mean, I think the best match of his career is against Davey Richards in 2010. Seth Rollins wasn't in that match. But that was the man. <laughs> no, nope. Same man. No, nope. That's just that's part of his Rollins. career. Nope. He didn't, he didn't that's Black. his that's career. That's part of his career. Stop, stop being asshole. Who is this, Seth right? Rollins and who? Huh? <laughs> Seth Rollins versus Davey Richards, Death Before This Honor. Let me Google that. 2010. Seth, Seth Rollins Death Death versus Davey <laughs> Seth Rollins, <laughs> a.k.a. Tyler Black, it's the same person, man. Um, it's part of his career. It's part of his career. Is this, the, is this the best match that he's had at Seth Rollins? Yes. Okay. That's, in my opinion, the best match of his career. This is the, easily the highest profile, most important match of his career. Uh, my personal favorite, which I think is his best match, is the one back in 2010. But, you know, argue, if you said this is the best match of his career, I wouldn't argue with you. All right. Uh, he has another M2J. question for you. Wait, he has another question for you. Oh, okay. Which was better, Rumble Match 2014 or 2015? They both were reprehensible trash. Uh, I, I, uh, neither. A uh, meteor is better. <laughs> uh, I, they, I hate, I hate the both of them with a burning passion. I think they both were just god awful. So that's it. Um, which M2J? Which of the old WWE shows would be best suited for modern day WWE? Tuesday Night Titans. Yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> what was the best tag team match? Uh, of I guess of this Rumble pay per view because the whole undercard was tag matches I guess so I don't know. Um, well if if we're talking about just this Rumble I would say it was uh, uh the, the Masters of, the Masters of the Universe yeah um versus New Day if okay what's the best tag match in Rumble history man oh well that's Dusty Rhodes and Dustin uh, Dustin Rhodes versus the Million Dollar Man and Virgil awesome just because of the way it ends my personal favorite would be the the tables match. From Rumble 2000? Mm. 2000. Yeah, that one. But this is when Virgil finally hit the Million Dollar Man with Million Dollar Belt and became a face. I don't know if you remember, but Virgil was a really bad wrestler. Virgil was great. This is a, like, a good character as, like, the houseboy. He was amazing. Racism. He was amazing. But he is awful. I was, just I, was awful. Listening to his, I was listening to his theme earlier today, and I was like, this theme's awesome. Sean, yes. what was the best returning legend? Uh, his favorite was DDP. So what are your choices? Mm. DDP or Bubba, Bubba Ray, or does Boogeyman count as a legend? We're talking, oh, we're just talking about this Rumble specifically? Uh, Bubba Ray, definitely. Bubba Ray. Definitely. All right, so what about what about ever? What's your mm. favorite, like, legendary return? Like, like I, I, I'll, 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 you know, simplify it. Like, a legend that returned, like, as a one-off just for the Rumble, because they've done that a lot over the years. Mm. Done... <laughs> You want to know what's funny? None really stand out to me. Okay. That I really care about. Okay. Straight up, like, I just don't care about those things. Well, okay. Now, here's the bigger question for Sean. Who will win the Super Bowl this year? <sighs> Patriots. Between the Patriots and the... C the the mm -hmm. Patriots? Yeah, I think so. Did they, fi they finally win one again after their long, you know... Yeah, I think so. I don't know. The Seahawks are hot. Maybe they, they main, were main, the Broncos last year. Main two guys on the Seahawks are injured. Uh, ah. Thomas, yeah, Thomas and Sherman, they're, they're hurt. Oh, I think Sherman the Patriots hurt. are primed. They're both hurt. So I, I, I just have a feeling the Patriots are primed. Much to hate right. to say it. All right. Well, you know, let's continue with things that people actually care about. Oh, uh, wow. One last question. <laughs> Will WrestleMania end with fans cheering, booing, all walked out for silence? Well, oh, my God, how great would that be to just walk out of Mania if it, if, if it actually is like – Reigns and Lesnar, and that's it. Or just everyone just gets up and leaves. Nobody's walking out on Brock Lesnar. I'm sorry. I, that's the thing, though. Yeah, I, I it's. I You're would right love you. to do it to prove a point, like try to like get people like let's just walk out. But I still want to see a Lesnar match if it in fact is his last match. Yeah, and, and I mean, don't you guys think that match might be pretty good? No, mm, nah, not really, man. Really? Reigns hasn't had a good sing like a really good singles match to make me think otherwise. That's the thing that's too. That's true, I mean, but he also hasn't had a good opponent. Okay. Randy oh, Orton. He had, he, he, yeah, he, had, he, had, he had an okay match with Randy Orton, but I'm saying it's kind of like... Yeah, yeah I mean, we start different on that because I think Randy Orton's matches are pretty boring anyway because they're very generic, but they that's can. just me. They can be. That's fine. I mean, yeah, I love Randy Orton, but that's okay. I feel like Brock Lesnar just makes 
everything interesting. The way he attacks, the way he sells. And Roman Reigns doesn't, so that's what's hard about it. I don't know. Just, it, and this is why it's not over with the fans. If Roman Reigns has been having like uh, these great matches for a while, and then he's boosted up... You know, people be like, "Oh, I want to see him in a main event." That's it's another. Be a good match. That's another big thing too, is that he you hasn't, know what I mean? he hasn't been having these uh, fantastic matches that have really gotten the crowd behind him. That's kind of important. Oh, absolutely! No, you guys are right about that, and I don't particularly think that's even his fault and, so much. Yeah, no, but, I, I, I but can't. The fact that it matter is he hasn't. I right. can't stress this enough, though. Like, none of this is his fault. It really is no, not. No, it's not. It's not. Like, I just really. Like, he deserves better than this, and they screwed him over bad. And I feel, yep. I feel really bad for Roman Reigns. I really do. Don't, don't don't mistake everything I'm saying for me bashing the guy. I like yeah. the guy, but they're, just, they're doing it all wrong. It's just not, it's not like, working. Like, any argument that, that Vince McMahon could make why the crowd is not behind Cesaro and they haven't pushed him anymore, you could make the same argument for Roman Reigns, except Cesaro isn't getting pushed, Roman Reigns is. It's it's total, it's it, the whole thing about not connecting, and we listen to the fans it's total BS. You 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 lie right. Yeah, when when your fans go dead quiet when a guy gets eliminated from the Rumble because everybody wanted him to win, and you, you you don't you're like, oh, he's gonna play Sheamus. Yeah. yeah, like they clearly cheer for guys, and they clearly but and and you know what they're gonna say? You know what they're gonna uh, chalk up this whole Rumble thing to? Oh, the Philly crowd. It's Philly. It was Philly, of course. You know what I mean? They always they always do that whenever they're in like a, a big city like that. Yeah, it was Philly. A big wrestling city. Yeah, it was Philly. Big wrestling, exactly. I, but you know, but saying that point, I hope they realize that, or um, uh, the, are, the wrestling the fans. Yeah, the wrestling. Oh, sorry, I say, those are the fans that actually like pay money to see stuff. Those are the, those are the fans that like sell out arenas. Those are the fans that are gonna go to Mania and boo yeah. Roman Reigns out of the building. Yep, it's true. Okay. Well, he 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 thanks all of us. He calls me the beat boot master. I was Roman Reigns. Uh, not Roman. Wow, subliminal. I was uh, mm. Dean Ambrose all all weekend at Magfest. That was fun. Got a lot of love for that. Mm hmm. Um, okay, so we have, we got Steve-O, we got Pain's Points, and we got a newcomer, so. And I have uh, Amy, our favorite Asian. Go ahead. Uh, hi, True Wrestling Fan M2J, uh, Metal, Sh Metal Sean Michael Spurge, and Luggy doesn't go to wrestling shows, Harry Grumpy Kids. <laughs> That's okay. all one word. No, it's short this time. <laughs> so, about that rumble, best rumble of the decade. Oh, my God. So we just forget about the first two matches of Jeez. the night ever happened. The triple threat match was definitely the best match, best match of the decade. Okay, all right, we get it. Um, the, ch the cheek of this woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next time you watch the match, take a shot every time someone gets suplexed. Oh, no, I'm alcohol poisoning waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Did you guys feel that the match was too suplexy? No. We were we were all counting the suplexes and just laughing and enjoying it actually in that room. It was a fun time. Uh, or was it just awesome to see Cena getting tossed around a ton? Yeah, it totally is. It's always fun to see. Yeah. Cena takes bumps. It's one thing you gotta love about the guy. He he, he takes them. I he mean he 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 takes some bad ones, but the good ones he takes are, right. are great. Um, mm -hmm. on to the Rumble, aka Boo Fest. Uh, what was your favorite moment during the Rumble? When Roman Reigns won. <laughs> I'm kidding. My favorite. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm trolling. <laughs> um, I, I did like, uh, oh man, I don't know. I guess that first diamond cutter that DDP did when he floated over to the back and then spun it around, and that was. That I was liked. Like, I liked when he diamond cut Bray Wyatt because I really didn't think that one was going to happen. Right. Yeah. Like I was like, well, he's going to because he already did two of them at that point. I said, well, he's going to shove him off and it, diamond cutter. What? Awesome. Was, just seeing a diamond cutter. Um. Do you feel the fans kind of took away Roman Reigns' moment when he won? Um, we didn't talk about this enough, so let's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, of course they did, but you know, That's, yeah, they didn't like it. That, that so what do you been, want? That should, have been the of, that should have been the greatest side of his life, and they. No, they, the greatest side of his life is going to be at WrestleMania, but they're going to take it. We're going to take it away from him again. That might, that might be even worse. Yeah. Uh, will Denny Lugs recover from this loss? Well, will I recover? I asked you first. Uh, I did the Italian thing and repeated. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I'll gonna be fine i'm gonna go to wrestlemania and it's just you know if wrestle if i don't have such a great time at wrestlemania i might consider like just not going to these events anymore i don't think i'm, go just, I'm not going to 32 uh i, I it's kind of like i just if this is the way you want to do things it, it, i'll just leave it at like when a, a great match happens i'll i'll check it out when i hear about it but i just like i just keep putting all this time into into what man, i mean I, I i mean at I, I'd rather wait to see what the car's going to look like, and I know it's it's likely to sell out, but um, that 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 Dallas stadium is going to be and holds like a hundred thousand people, right? Yeah, I would only want to go just to be in. It's it's the largest stadium in the country. Yeah. So I'm not. An, 
you know. I'm not so interested. I'm going to wait to see what the card is. If the card looks stupid, you know, and I have to wait the last minute and I can't get tickets, oh well. Like, I'm not making... Because part of the reason that they can do whatever they want is because WrestleMania sells itself at this point. They could, they could just give us a bunch of crap. But the only problem is, you know, you'd have to wait another year for that to be a fallout. A.K.A. WrestleMania 31. Exactly. Um, aside from D. Bry, who was your second uh, runner-up for winning the Rumble? Um... I, Roman Reigns. <laughs> my, I mean... Oh, for wanting or who you thought? I guess who who you wanted. I don't know, it doesn't specify. Um, the person I wanted to win, if, if not Dee Bryant, was going was to be uh, Randy Orton. Yes, which was very, very surprising that they didn't use him. And he was there, apparently, and dressed to work. Him and and they, said, they said no. Him and Nikolai Volkov, both, apparently. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't apparently know why. Apparently a lot of people. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. I, mean, I don't know why they're 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 saving him and waiting. And technically, Curtis Axel made it to the end of the Rumble. The Rumble's not over. Yeah. It was a few Randy, guys been Randy Orton would have been Randy Orton would have been um would have been my second choice as well. Because like if I was gonna get D. Bry, I I still want to see that Randy Orton versus Brock Lesnar that we've never seen. Remember remember when he got white hot to a fever pitch right before he left and he never came back? That <laughs> was really stupid of them to time it that way. It's horrible. Anyway. Yep. Um. Making a lot of good decisions in this company. She honestly liked the Royal Rumble. Glad you're being honest. Uh, wow. I had a great time. Saw Matt because he's a true wrestling fan. Thank you. Uh, I laughed so hard at all the hatred. And at the and end of the I day... Didn't want to go to see, I don't want to go to Philly to see a bad Rumble. I know. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're still watching this on a weekly basis. Uh, d Bray wasn't even in the Rumble last year. Uh, I think it will work itself out besides the year of Bray Wyatt. He'll, uh, I hope so. He'll turn Amy 2015. P.S. Uh, how about that Monday Night Raw? The show looked like it got snowed out. Ha, 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 ha. Hilarious. Mm. Thank you, baby girl. Oh. Hey, remember when Roman Reigns was smooth wow, and saying wow, fucking wow, baby girl? Stop, stop. You're hurting us. Speaking remember? of things that are not smooth. Right. You just now. You just, you just did your... I, I, you, was, I, was, I, was, I was referencing Roman Reigns. No, you just... No, you, you shoot can. Yeah, you did, you did the super loud thing. Oh, I yeah. did? Oh, I'm sorry. I clipped the mic, I think. Stop clipping the mic. Remember when Roman Reigns said baby girl? Yes. I, I was do. Cool. Renee, I was, that was like the oh, first yeah. time I was like, "Oh, this guy's gonna, this guy's gonna make it. He's gonna be fine." And then I, yeah, no. I'm like, "Oh, he's he's gonna be that smooth guy." And now, you know, they they took that away. They gotta do that. Did you guys get pain points? Yep. Yeah, I got them. Mm, okay. So we doing pain points next, or Steve says stuff? Um, I'll do pains. Okay. All right, some thoughts on the Royal Rumble. I'll try to shoot through them quick because this is the longest show ever, but it's awesome. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Overall, I think it was kind of a letdown. The only thing that really stated for me was the WWE Championship match. Five out of five, he says. I thought it did an amazing job. Uh, hands down, my favorite Seth Rollins match of his career. So there you go. I love how you followed the Phoenix Flash. Uh, the Royal Rumble itself was okay. I love DDP. Give him diamond cutters to everyone. Uh, he, he hopes that Bubba Ray has a short run, but I really think it's just a one-off from what I hear. Um... Did, uh, was it just me? Did he get a lot of weight since he left TNA? I, I, it looks like he did. He looks like he did. He might have done that on purpose to be Bubba Ray again. All right. So now for the Roman Reigns winning, uh, it was predictable, but it wasn't a. But it, it was predictable, but it wasn't a. Well, that's the same thing. Uh, all right. Uh, we all kind of expected him to win. I liked it when it was down to the final four and Dean and Reigns teamed up. Yes. Uh, I'm certain this subject is going to be run to the ground. Yeah, exactly. So I mean. What else can we say? But at least he, you know, he's being positive. He liked that when it teamed up for a little bit. So that gave him at least, you know, silver lining. As for Raw, I was surprised the show was, uh, he, he liked it. It was a breath of fresh air, a little, you know, break from normal format. Yeah, it was. I really like JBL's weather report and Dean's hitchhiking segment. <laughs> you know, would you guys be a po like, I feel like with Raw and SmackDown that we have just so much content with two major shows a week, wouldn't it be cool if, like, one show was like that every week, another show was, like, live in the arena? You mean, like, Tuesday Night Titans? Yeah, something that effect where it's, like, we advance storylines in different ways with, like, some in-studio interviews, showing some clips and segments and, like, analyzation. Like, that was interesting, you know? Tuesday Night Titans. Definitely. Greatest show ever. There you go. Uh, All right, Tino Santana was pretty over back then. Like, Jesus no, like, no joke. The interviews were great. Uh, they weren't completely unscripted, as we, as we know. But they had a real nice feel to them. Uh, the effective uh, sit-down as opposed to shooting them in the ring, especially geared towards Reigns. I thought he delivered his best promo last night in the last segment uh, where him and Lesnar faced over great. I, I, just, I strongly disagree, but that's okay. You'll have your opinion. Uh, Heyman told an amazing story in five minutes. It made uh, Reigns appear that he may be able to rise up uh, to the occasion. I, I look, I mean... 
uh, Paul Heyman, like we always say, chicken beef poop and chicken salad every time. So what are we going to say? Uh, as for Raw, six hitchhiking Deans uh, out of ten. <laughs> so Dean, like, hitchhiked and showed up there, and they didn't do anything with that. He just showed up. That was weird, yeah. He just showed and up, and that was it. I thought it was like, oh, Dean could do something cool, and didn't. But that's the kind of stuff, that, but that's a problem with this this company, with this show. You know, they give us glimpses of things we like, and they just don't fall through. They just don't do anything. I just don't get it, man. And that, that's not cool. It's not cool <laughs> at all. Uh, you read Steve-O. Um, Steve to the O. Good the evening. Good evening, gents. My, <laughs> my DCJ, what big Facebook threads you have. Um, I will try to keep my comments short, but every time I say that, I end up rambling on. So, I won't. Uh, rather than an overview... Um, Allow me to contribute a few nuances to my observations. SmackDown this week is minimal, so we got like another Kane versus D. Bryan match coming up this week, right? Casket match. Yeah. Casket. Well, the, SmackDown, aka Raw. It's like right. one big. Uh, sign of the night was the uh, was the I, I was told there'd be jet bash or something like that. Whatever that was. Oh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, anyone else noticed no cell rolling lately? No. <coughs> um. Anyway, uh, as I said on Facebook, I'd really like to know what MTJ thought about the show from my perspective. Uh, that was basically all I had to say was that uh, the moment he the moment he got eliminated, the energy was gone. The audience no longer cared. It was it was such a stupid move, and Girl. it was a, akin to Lesnar beating the streak. Um, I enjoyed Bubba Ray's return and hope to see him uh, work singles again. He's probably not going to be. Crowd exploded exploded. Well, it's because it was Philly. Um, anyone keeping tabs on how long it's been since Zack Ryder actually got some airtime? I Pretty sure it was in September. Um, uh, as long as uh, it was tough to explain to people who are non wrestling who the Boogeyman and DDP were. Tough, really? Just like, <laughs> they're, they're wrestlers from like a long time ago. I don't even know how you explain the Boogeyman to, to people who aren't wrestling fans. Say he was a wrestler in the mid 2000s. Done. Um, <laughs> anyone? <laughs> I mean, it's like, hard enough to explain to me who is a wrestling fan. I, I'm just saying, like, ha- explain to non wrestling people who Boogeyman and DDP are. Okay, well, DDP was, oh, well, DDP yeah. was a wrestler in the, in the mid to late 90s for WCW, and Boogeyman was a, a WWE wrestler from, uh, from like the mid 2000s. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Um, please talk about Cena versus Rusev. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ms. Dow and Ambrose comedy spots have been a huge uh, bright point on the shows. Um, I like the goofy, uh, the goofy stuff that's family friendly. Yeah, but it's running, it's running its course. Does Brock have really tiny ears, or just a really fat head? Brock's head, it, he, Brock has like a Simpsons head. Have you noticed that? Like the way it's shaped. <laughs> it is shaped very With odd. the brown and everything. Um, he probably has Homer Simpson syndrome, where he has an extra like layer of fluid in his head, so he doesn't feel pain. Um, he was super tan on at the Rumble too. Yeah, um, he was sitting on a tanning bed way too long. Well, you know, he's got nothing else to do. He just sits at home and tans and works out. Sleep, tan, repeat. Yep. Yeah. Um, GTL. Uh, <laughs> uh, the three way was a match of the year contender. Albeit the year is still young. Yeah, no, I'm sure that'll be a match of the year contender. Go, oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, can we put JBL in the cold more often? Uh, can we give? Uh, can we give turn off Booker T's? Uh, can we give turn off Booker T's mic during the side table analysis? Absolutely not. Um, or turn up his volume when he's joking with JBL. Uh, the more you can humanize the announcers, uh, the better the sound. I mean, if I have to hear one more time, you've got to be kidding me. You you got to be kidding me. I noticed is like usually reserved for when people make surprise returns, but they've just kind of been throwing it out there a lot lately. Yeah, I think we were discussing this last week, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, if anyone, Just wait, hold on. Here we go. When Zack Ryder came out in the Rumble, did they do it? You got to be kidding me. No, because it's Zack Ryder. Gotcha. <laughs> because if that's if that's how we uh, see the pirate return, that will give you the point. Yeah, but he didn't say it for Boogeyman either. Oh, maybe he did. He probably. Whatever. Did. I'm I'm over it. I'm tired of these both of these. <laughs> um, where was I? Uh, if anyone is canceling the network, can you send me your password for the rest of the month? My live stream went down, and you idiots are getting visibly distraught at the conclusion of the match. I do think it's the. I do think it's the best booking. No, but I did handwrite a nasty gram to Dixie Carter either. I didn't handwrite it. I don't understand. What's nasty gram? What the hell's a nasty gram? I don't know. Man. All right. Steve-O asks stuff. Denny, what future feud going towards Mania are you most looking forward to? Uh, Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins because, yeah, that's it. That's it? 
Uh, Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins and Sting versus Triple H. Sean um, and Denny, you are confronted at your job by an angry idiot who is railing about canceling the network. What do you say? Like, what do you mean? Like, he he's angry about the pay-per-view and he cancels his network? What do I say to him? I suppose, yeah. Uh, you're an idiot. The net- network is awesome. You can... I tell... Yeah. I tell him he's lying and oh. empty threat. You're, you're dumb because uh, not only do you have... do you, Are you a wrestling fan? Do you like WWE at all? If you don't like the WWE or anything they've ever done in the past, then cancel it because you're wasting your $10 a month. Uh, I could watch at my whim anything that I want that they've ever done and the original shows they do... And NXT, the best wrestling show that they have, uh, that's the only place you can watch it, so you're dumb. Yeah, I, I don't even say all those things. I just say you're lying to me right now. You're yeah. whining for the sake of whining, and you're not going to cancel the network. I, I, I don't believe that the the thing going around that the cancellation site crashed. Yeah. I don't believe that for I a mean, second. it's very possible it did. The WWE came out and said that that did not happen, so I believe that. Hmm. Um, M2J, if you could replace the commentators from eight, with 80s, 90s managers, who would you pick? Well, Heenan, obviously. Um, I'm trying to think who was a manager back then, like Lou Albano. Or, um, 80s and 90s managers. 80s and 90s managers. Um, I mean, like, Heenan's the, one of the managers that became a commentator. Everyone else, though, I'm not really sure. And I, have to, I have to think about that one. Like, Johnny Valiant, I don't think, was a good talker. He sounds like Ted Turner. Um, by the way, um, Adrian Adonis is on uh, Tuesday Night Titans a lot, and he wasn't really that fat. He just ballooned between, like, 84 and 87. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Bobby Heenan, I'd have to think about who the other managers that were puttering around at that time. Maybe Lou Albano would be good to have there. You know, you you always need a guy like Gorilla Monsoon to talk about the uh, you know ex- occipital perturbance from the back of the head. <laughs> Is that it for our emails? No, um, I've got them. Oh, I got I got a I got a whole another one. Oh, a whole nother. I didn't even know. Whole another. I didn't even know Sean gets word. to those. I got a brand new fan of the show, Justin Smith, who was actually with us um, watching the Rumble at Magfest. Met him there, gave him the info of the show, and now he is on board. He actually was posting a lot and commenting a lot last night. Uh, what's up, Denny and the DTJ crew? So much stuff has happened. WB is trying to make the points off uh, first with a question. First off, I want to say that it was awesome hanging out with you guys at MAGFest and watching Rumble Pay Per View. Well, it was just me, but, you know, yes, it was cool. Uh, having a poopy time at the fest, drama-related, whatever. Having a beer, talking wrestling was needed, so thanks. All right, yeah, we had a great time. Uh, second, as much as the fans were pissed uh, that uh, Dana Bryan, you know, uh, I'm happy that Roman Reigns is getting a chance. Or something. All right, so he's optimistic. He's happy that Roman Reigns is getting a chance. Uh, CM Punk said it best. How will you know how good a wrestler can be if they don't get an opportunity to shine? Yes, I thought about that, too. Good point. So they, there you go. This, this, was, this is for Sean. There is no better place to shine than the main event of WrestleMania. Roman has shown that with the right push, he could be amazing. Hey, he has? He's shown it? Uh, I don't think he has. Uh, and like I said that night, he and the lineage uh, and the look of a new top guy, the WWE could market to the kids and even to the 18, 30-year-old. Uh, you know, so I guess he, he sees that there could be success with uh, this marketing of uh, Roman Reigns. As far as Daniel Bryan... Uh, the truth is that he just got back after a damn uh, near year of injury. WWE won't take a chance on Brian uh, that he'll get injured again. or uh, Yeah, basically so his point is that uh, I guess they're not going to go with him. His, their, his, he thinks the reason is because he's still, you know, no. he's, at, he's at 100. Remember that guy who broke his frigging neck and was paralyzed yeah. and then he went on to be the biggest star in the company? Yeah, I know. Us? I know. I, he, I guess he's trying to find some kind of... He's being positive, I guess. I will say that Brian has a better chance uh, of keeping the Yes Movement going and them uh, winning the WWE title at SummerSlam. It's honestly a better a better story. All right, so we can hold out for that. Uh, his question to us is that now that the match is set for WrestleMania 31, also after the little one confrontation on Snow Day between Brock and Roman, what can Roman do to help build this match? I mean, Brock doesn't have to do much. Maybe talk a little more and play up the top of the mountain persona. Roman has to prove why this match is going to be good. He can, 
Can he build the match? Do you think that he can even get the people behind him? I love to hear uh, the opinion tonight. I'll be listening, hopefully, live. Uh, Justin. So that, that's a really good question. Can Roman Reigns pull this off? But the thing is, is it Roman Reigns doing it, or are we going to have to rely on the writing, which is well, it's poor. Devil's, adv- I, Devil's Advocate is Roman Reigns running with the ball right now. I'm going to say he can't. He can't. There's just about n- nothing he can do to salvage this right now. Yeah, I think that he's even if he had even if he has it in him, he's just up against it. There's there's nothing he like. They just the fans have decided straight up. I think that um the WWE real if they're gonna realize that the fans are against them, they're gonna try to do everything they can from now until Mania to do stuff to get the fans behind him. But I can already feel in my bones that all the things that they're gonna write for him to do. It, they, they're just not going to work because they have they've been doing the stuff that people don't like and they're going to keep doing that. I don't see it happening, but I wonder if you see a double turn at some point. Hmm. But then Lesnar the playing face. But then it's hard it's hard for me to believe that with Heyman in his corner. I just feel like if Lesnar if Lesnar's the baby face, then what he's going to lose to the heel at Mania? What? Well, I mean, that would if they want Reigns to ultimately end up being a heel because they have no choice then that would definitely get him heat. Right, but then, you know, then there needs to be a contingency plan there. <laughs> if it's if it's another heel cashing in who will get a reception of Mania, but then... Well, then the silly thing is you make him face, you, you make him leave the authority and go face, but then why why would you build him up to be the authority's golden boy forever that doesn't, like, come to a payoff? I mean, you know, the, the authority... It's unlikely. The authority... Very unlikely, very unlikely. The authority, of course, is an evil faction, and, and they can turn on any of their own in a heartbeat, and that could, that's easily the solution to that. Yeah, but if they're building towards Randy Orton and Seth Rollins, which is probably going down, then that'd be silly to change that up. But, uh, Sean, you said you got personal emails? Yeah, I got a couple. Go ahead. All right. Um, This one is from Rich Lito, Rich Lewis, in our Facebook group. Uh, Him and I shared a couch for the Royal Rumble, so I got a lot of his thoughts, as it were. But he emailed in. Um, I'll try to to summarize some of this. Um, He went to the house show that was at the Eisenhower Center the other night. Uh, I know a few people went to that. It was apparently the last one. Yeah. Did we discuss, was, by the way, that SummerSlam's not going to happen at, at where it was supposed to happen? Yeah, well, they, they, right? they're tearing down the Izod, but uh, I assume they're going to do something else in the area, probably Prudential, because WWE has, is not doing events at the Garden anymore. Like, which, like really, pay per views. Do you, uh, you don't have okay. anything to assume? Well, I mean, I just I just feel like, I think since they redid it, right, like uh, Dolan just charges too much, and WWE's like, screw you. Yeah. So he's an a hole, like the biggest a hole. Mm hmm. Pretty much, he is an a hole, but that's he's, he's the, the Rangers. He's the worst. Yeah, that's from a Rangers Knicks perspective. Uh, exactly. That's a whole other story. The owner that's of the gar- the owner of Madison Square Garden is the biggest a hole. Just so everyone knows, yeah, he owns the Rangers, and the Knicks, and whatever. We'll it's say that for a different podcast. The worst. Um, like I said, I'll try to summarize a little bit. He said, uh, so, uh, he was at the last house show at the Izod Center uh, Saturday night. Sat four rows from the front. Uh, he has to say, sitting that close gives you a whole new perspective on what we're used to viewing on TV. Uh, it talks about how Ziggler was over, Harper was over. Um, they had a great match with Wade Barrett. Um, we had a Y2J Cesaro match where Cesaro actually cursed at Y2J. He said he was going to beat the beat poop out of him. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, he said Lana is beat poop hot <laughs> in, in person. Uh, he, and yeah, he was sending me pictures throughout the night too. And Lana does look uh, pretty, rap, pretty, rap, pretty rap, Russian. Yeah. Um, got a small shield reunion because they had Ambrose and, and Reigns team up uh, against Wyatt and I forgot who said it was, but they had that um, and it was a cage match too with Cena and Rollins. So he said overall it was, it was a really good show. Uh, all in all, WWE pulled out all the stops for this final show at the Izod Center. Great place to watch a show. And he says I would take the Izod Center over Barclays or the Garden any day. I hate the Barclays. I, I despise the Barclays Center. Barclays is a piece of crap. Uh, I like I love the Garden. I mean that's like home, you know. And yeah. I love I love the way it's remodeled too. Yeah, I'm very partial to the Garden, but Barclays that's a dump. Sorry. Oh, just, just Barclays is just utter a reprehensible trash. Is the it's word. dark. It's dingy. The seats are cramped. It's it feels like you know it, it was just built a few years ago and it feels like an arena that's like 20 years old already. Yep. It's, it's awful. And furthermore, I don't like it. Yeah. Good day, sir. <laughs> um, just a few thoughts on the Rumble. Uh. The Ascension are the Ascension are a joke, and WWE will never get them over. Nope. Might as well send them back down to NXT and repackage them. They're unspectacular, if that's even possible, in a weak tag division. They they yell like idiots, and the minute they appear on screen, I tune out. And I could not agree more with him. Just the uh, Ascension just are oh, the drizzling. 
just a bad sign of people that come up from NXT. I just really feel like they they miss they've so far mishandled like all of them. And especially if they go forward with that thing you've been reading online for Adrian Neville with the Mighty Mouse gimmick. Oh God, let's just it, hope not. Like 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 they started out okay with Paige, but even now she's just meaningless. It could just, work. It could yeah. work. Just pick yeah. pick just picture it. I doubt it. Just picture. Um, there's something bad happening in the ring. Someone needs to make a save, and suddenly, here I come to save the day, and he just runs out. Oh, my God, it'd be great. Are you the uh, one smoking crack? Yeah. <laughs> I think he is. The ghost of Andy Kaufman comes out. <laughs> Tyson, Kidd, and Cesaro should be the next tag team contenders. Uh, good team. They seem to complement each other really well. I agree with that. What do you guys think? It's just It's just a shame after, you know, uh, we say it a million times. I know. Last year. And then he's going to go into Mania again in another tag team again. You know, it's, I don't know, man. Hey, yeah. what if I can read Jumpstart his career, though? The yeah. Masters yeah. of the Universe. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, I like Roman. Granted, his mic skills are subpar, but a few months ago, people were clamoring over this guy. Then he loses all his momentum with this injury. Now he is a public enemy number one. People oh. say he was handpicked, and there was an effort to make him look strong. But is that any different from any other guy who gets a big push? Nobody was clamoring. There was no. Uh, I well, we know where I stand on this. There was no. Clamoring. And I and I totally and I've said this every show we've had for the past like month that I don't think it's any different from any other guy who gets a big push. It's ever since the CM Punk comment on make him look strong. That's what ruined him. Because if he was said that about Bray Wyatt, then everybody hate Bray Wyatt. Because no, no, that's but that's the thing though. No one's gotten the push that he's getting. But all, the, all, all the guys that everyone's been wanting to get the big push he's getting never got it, and now some guy that people didn't really want is getting it, and that's why they're voicing their opinion. That's the that's the difference. They're overlooking all these other guys that have been – Matt said it with Ziggler, blah, 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 and, and now he gets it. That's why. That is why. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he comes yeah. out of nowhere and is like, well, no, he's the guy. I'm like, we've been telling you all the guys we like for years now. But him, that is why. Punk didn't help. It made all the idiot fans jump on the bandwagon. Believe me, I agree. It massively hurt. But it, but it's, but it's not just the, the almighty CM Punk's words. Who, who even cares about friggin' CM Punk? He walked out. Screw that. A guy. lot, of, a lot of stupid idiots care. I, I love CM Punk, but forget him now. He's out of this world. He doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah, it's I still. Pre- it's easy for us to say. I still disagree with that. That that uh that whole that that hurt. I I. I, I I think that's the number one thing that hurt him. I, I, no, definitely not. The, the number not one the, thing that hurt him. And I don't the think one thing close. that's hurting him is Vince McMahon. I don't think it's close. Vince, you can Vince definitively Vince. say that's when everybody really started to give it to Roman Reigns. Vince yeah. needs to step down. Well, that we all agree on, I think. He needs to step down. He needs to, he needs to loosen the reins. There's the pun again. He loosen the reins up. He needs to step down on 60 under. Oh, Jesus. That's Whoa. just awful. That's yeah. awful. Moving along, uh, Dean Ambrose should be the guy to bring... You know, bring... I'd like to think that this company's going to be better after Vince McMahon is dead, <laughs> but it, it's going to get taken over by his idiot daughter and his doofus son-in-law and the rest of his stupid family. Wow, you actually kind of sound like him. But his yeah. doofus son-in-law probably would be booking things a lot differently. Yeah, if you believe that uh, he's... You... Yeah, remember he, wanted the yeah Rock versus, remember he wanted The Rock versus Brock Lesnar, right? Or was that, was that the other way around? I don't think so. No, that was the other way around. That was those, rum- those rumors are unfounded. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Dean Ambrose should be the guy to bring the Intercontinental Championship back, uh, back to glory. To once I, had, I feel but... like we we revisit this discussion every couple of weeks. Someone needs to bring the, inter- <laughs> the, the, the Intercontinental Champion back to this, or this person makes the belt, or the belt makes this person. Like this belt is meaningless. It's going to be meaningless until it goes away again because it already went away once before. No one even remembers that. So we should it just throw it in the garbage. It shows a mess. We should just throw it in the garbage then. Never is a mess. It yeah. is. It's it's complete That's disarray. Like I, I, you know, I'm. I, we should probably just do a podcast about something else after Mania. <laughs> I, I think so. We'll just, I, you know what? I, I really think so. I, I, I really think we're gonna need to change the show up. After like, WrestleMania. we'll just just review movies or something like that, and then like we're gonna start doing other things. Like we'll have like a half an hour about what's going on in WWE, and then just talk about other stuff. Or like we'll we'll have like we'll have like a catch up show. Or like every season, we'll have like like right after Mania, we'll do a show. Right, right after all the big four, we'll do a show. I'm like, what was happening really, four months ago? Yeah, and this is just really, ri- this is ridiculous at this point. It's kind of out of control, man. It's so upsetting. Man, you guys just hating, hating, hating. Sean. If you don't like something, what do you do? Yep, yep. You turn it off. You're absolutely right. I mean, I was watching Tuesday Night Titans why, last why, night. Why Darn. wait until WrestleMania? Just do it now. WrestleMania, because we're, we're going to WrestleMania. Because we're going to WrestleMania. That's stupid, so just go. We, ha- 
We have don't to have stay invested. We have to stay invested at least. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, no, I'll just go there and, and not watch everything leading up to Mania so I care about it because I'm going to go there. I have to stay invested. I'm going. So what? What does that mean? Because I want to enjoy I want to enjoy the show as much as I can, so I have to stay invested in this product. I, I, but I feel like that's kind of productive because I feel like you watching is going to make you enjoy it less by the way you're talking. We can only see. It kind of makes a point there. I do, don't no, I? You, yeah. you make a point. You make a point, but I mean, like, I have to yeah, try. Like we, might, we might enjoy Mania more if we do, if we stop watching. But I have to try because <laughs> they might do things that I Oh, will. man. And that's why you will never, ever stop watching. Probably not. <laughs> anyway, he closes off. Uh, I rather enjoyed the, the Raw recap show we got last night. The interviews were good, and seeing that triple threat match again was awesome. I don't know how it went over with everyone else, but I was entertained, and I would not be shocked to see more things like that going forward. Yep. Yep, okay, good. Um, I did like it, but we talked about that already. Uh, last one we got, uh, Cody Pension. He's in our Facebook group. Wow. All right. Uh, he said, hi, I've been to a couple of house shows, and the atmosphere has been totally different than the TV taping I was at. It seems that the booking uh, – oh, I'm sorry. It seems that the booing and the disrespectful chants are only on TV. Now, I know people are upset at the fact that Roman Reigns won – and is going to Mania, but a lot of this seems to come from smarks who, in general, take a dump on the product no matter what. What frustrates me, what frustrates me is the creative direction and the fact that the audience is treated like kids, which I believe is sadly the intent. The intent. Uh, he says, I don't know if I made sense, but what I tried to say is, is it, is it me, or is there a difference in house show crowds and TV crowds? Uh, is the TV crowd's entire purpose to be noticed over the show itself? Uh, and is anyone else pissed the fact that we are treated like kids? I.e. replays and constantly reminding us of what just happened. I talk about that all the time that we're treated like idiots, but yeah. I, 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 and, and then I play devil's advocate and say, well, people are idiots, so WWE, I don't blame them for marketing it as such. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point that I brought up. And one thing though, the TV crowds—it's like they're trying to get themselves over, I guess you could say. Where I guess that's why it's a different crowd than a live show because they know they're not on TV. Some crowds, yes, definitely. Some cities. Um. I mean, I still I, – I haven't figured out how to get the WWE app on my phone yet. <laughs> I see what you did there. Anyway. Yeah, so. I just yeah, I just want to know for the record, I, I watched Tuesday Night Titans last night during Raw. Like, I turned – I didn't watch Raw. I watched Tuesday Night Titans. I watched wrestling from 30 years ago instead of wrestling from now. I'm sure here's, you're uh, here's an interesting thing on the sheets right now. I mean, I know we're going, like, super long, but it's, like, important. <laughs> Uh, it says, uh, coming out of the, and again, this is the sheets, coming out of the R Royal Rumble this weekend, it said that the only concrete match for 31 are Sting vs. Triple H, John Cena vs. Rusev, and Roman Reigns vs. Brock Lesnar for the title. Sheamus and Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt vs. Undertaker are also expected, but not a lot. However, last word on the Undertaker is, uh, was that WWE officials still did not know if he was returning for sure or not. The fact that there is still uncertainty this close to the event is not a good sign, but Taker still could appear in a non-wrestling role. That would be stupid. If he's not going to wrestle, I feel like he shouldn't even be there. Uh, it would be great if, if he was a guest commentator for some match, but he was completely in character, and he just said, like, four words the whole time. Like, he's sitting yeah. next to, like, uh, Michael Cole and JBL, and just like, uh, Taker, what do you have to say about this? Rest. In peace. Uh, it, it ends with saying another WrestleMania match rumored is Seth Rollins with Randy Orton. I feel like that should just be a lock. That's obvious. And yeah. that's probably the match I'm looking forward to the most at WrestleMania. Easily. And whatever Daniel Bryan does, even if it's Sheamus, I'll still want to see it. But it'd just be upsetting that, like, who friggin' cares? Who who really cares? Yeah. Pretty much. Well, then. Are we almost at the end of the show? Yeah. Um, definitely, we're definitely at the end of the show. We're not, you know, we're not almost. We are at the end of the show because there's no nuggets to roll last night. Oh, okay. That's, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just for some people were complaining that Raw showed the matches from the Rumble and said, "Well, I spent my money on the Rumble and showed these matches." Like, shut up. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. There was a, a snowstorm that ruined everything. So you know, it's kind of a nice treat that they were like, okay, it, you know, in lieu of a raw, which we can't do, here's the stuff. If you missed it, here it is. People want to cry. I spent my money. Screw you. Anyway, you've been listening to the doing the job. Oh boy, you're doing just... the job. Hey, don't forget, man. DJJWrestling.com. Just right. go there for everything. We have a. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail, which nobody does. Nobody leaves us a voicemail. Why does nobody leave yeah. us a voicemail? Leave us a goddamn voicemail. Phone numbers on there. The emails are on there. Just click a, click about. 
DTJWrestling.com. It's all yes. there. And I'm currently, I've started, and some of it's on there already, I've currently started to put all of our buyers, sellers, and over-unders of all time on there. So all of them from 2013 are currently on the site. Just a yeah, super shout-out to everyone in the Facebook group. Super shout-out to everybody emailing this super long week and uh, big show, a lot of emails. Big-time shout-out. I'll never hear this to Matthew for inviting me into the Royal Rumble party. We had a blast. Uh, did, you, did, did, you, did you try to get a plug for the show? Nah, I didn't want to be an a-hole, man. Just uh, right. I showed him some stuff from the show. I talked about the show, you know, so whatever. If he wants to look it up, he can. All righty. First, Sean Spurge and Denny Lugs. I am M2J, your handsome, valiant host, <laughs> saying, uh, see you next Tuesday. Bye.